everybody to South Kitsap High School and the final home game of the season as the undefeated and seventh ranked South Kitsap High School Wolves uh, will be taking on the Mount Tahoma Thunderbirds here tonight at the final home game of the regular season. And uh, right now, uh, the NJROTC here at South Kitsap High School will be presenting the colors for the of our national anthem. That was the South Kitsap High School marching band with the final rendition of the national anthem being played here this year during the regular season of the 2009 football season. As uh, we were starting to say, first of all, I'd like to uh, welcome back into the booth for the last time in this regular season, uh, David Rodriguez and D. Rod. Uh, thanks for again. Thanks again for being here in the booth with us. Darren, thanks for having me, and uh, it's always a pleasure to be back up here in the booth and uh, look for an exciting finale to the Wolves' uh, successful regular season. South Kitsap has had a very good season this year, going undefeated, ranked number seven in the state of Washington for the 4A ranks of the high schools as uh, South Kitsap overall comes into this contest 8-0, and oh, and uh, they have a 7-0 and oh overall record as Mount Tahoma comes in with an overall 2-6 and six record one in six in the Narrows League. Now, South Kitsap, uh, we would also like to uh, tell you that we're very happy to be coming to you live here this evening on SKTV, Wave Digital Cable Channel 205 here in the greater Kitsap County area. So it should be an exciting night for football as uh, it is also senior night here tonight, D-Rod, and uh, many of these seniors will be missed. Well, they certainly will. They've shown a, a lot of leadership. Um, they've really come in at last three years uh, especially this year really coming in and showing their stuff their talent 
and their, their ability to play together as a team and being a solid example for the uh, other younger guys this year and just overall putting together a really, really successful season that everybody here in Port Orchard can be really proud of. And South Kitsap would love nothing more than to head into the first round of the playoffs with an undefeated record. And uh, the last time that the Wolves were undefeated going into the end of the regular season, they were 8-0, and was back in 2002, in which they uh, eventually lost to Kent Ridge 29-8 in the second round of the postseason play to finish the season 9-1. and But the uh, Wolves are looking to try and uh, better that record and go as far as possible. So South Kitsap uh, will be making the playoffs next week and uh, pending tonight's outcome of the game, uh, uh, the South Kitsap Wolves will most likely have a home game next week. However, the home game will not be played here at Joe Knowles Field. Uh, the site is yet to be determined and we've been hearing that uh, this, the game will most likely be played at Peninsula High School on a neutral field or possibly over at Silverdale Stadium. So we will have to wait and see. And all of you folks who are watching out there tonight uh, can also read the newspapers and uh, you can contact the high school or the district office and find out exactly when the South Kitsap Wolves will be playing and exactly what location, what time, prices, and all that good stuff here as uh, the South Kitsap Wolves are going to come out. They will be kicking the ball away to the Mount Tahoma Thunderbirds and doing the kicking tonight will be number 17, the sophomore, uh, younger brother of Leon Ledeau, who is Aaron Ledeau. He's doing a very nice job this season with the place kicking duties for the Wolves and his brother, senior, Leon, who uh, does the punting for the Wolves. And uh, we kick off here from our right to left to Mount Tahoma as Ledeau kicks it off to Mount Tahoma. Mount Tahoma gets the ball at the 20-yard line. They get a little bit of a run right up the middle. The up back caught the ball around his 20 He's going to get down to the 32, a nice 12 yard return, and Mount Tahoma will have the first offensive possession here in the game. And uh, D-Rod, like we saw last week, uh, uh, we're gonna go down to the sideline here for Cameron Brown. Cameron, what do you have for us down there? Yes. Hi, this is Cameron Brown, live from the SK Live football field. Um, we're trying a new thing today, and we're bringing you a sideline report. It's actually a pretty uh, beautiful day out here. A lot better than we expected. We were expecting some definite weather problems, but it's actually um, it's actually pretty okay out here. As you can see, we have a fairly nice crowd going. Um, a lot of people are parents out here, but it's not actually senior night. Um, we are going to be we've we've already honored the seniors and their parents who are on the football team. And later on the halftime show. We are going to be bringing you um, the cheerleaders and the band members who are also seniors. They are going to be paying their respects to their parents. We'll stop by on that a little later. Um, but for now, let's take it back to Mr. Dow uh, Mr. Bowden. And, uh, Mount Tahoma with their first offensive uh, play. Uh, they go for the run straight up the gut and uh, they are stopped for a two yard loss and it's gonna be second 12 for Mount Tahoma around uh, their 30 yard line. They're in the shotgun formation. They're looking for the pass out the flat and the pass is caught. Nice stop there on defense. Number three, that's Isaiah Davis with the coverage and near the 40 yard line. It'll be stopped just short of the first down. But uh, D-Rod, uh, one of the strengths this year for the Wolves has been their very strong defense. Absolutely, the Wolves can always uh, hang their hat on their defense. And this year is definitely no exception as they have really stepped in and uh, uh, pitched a couple shutouts this year. One of them, uh, a couple weeks ago and just doing a very good job on defense. Uh, they gave up 18 to last week's opponent, Lincoln. Uh, pretty pretty uncharacteristic for him to be giving up that many points. We'll see what they can do here this week against Mount Tahoma. Mount Tahoma from the shotgun and they're going for the pass. They only need two yards. They're scrambling around. Oh, and the pass is the arm was going forward. Uh, good defensive uh, stop there. That was number five, Bo Otak and also number 45, Austin Cook and uh, they hurried the quarterback, scrambled just a little bit, had nowhere to run, and he tried to throw the ball forward, hit as he was thrown, the pass is incomplete, and it's going to be fourth and two, and just like that, Mount Tahoma is three and out. And defensively for the Wolves, you couldn't ask for any better situation if you're, punt if you're kicking off to the other team to force them into a three and out punt situation. And end over end kick, and Isaiah Davis is, oh, maybe going to take it, and it's quickly down, a very low end over end kick. 
Uh, Isaiah Davis uh, was back to receive the punt along with DeAndre Van Slyke, but uh, number one for the Mount Tahoma Thunderbirds was quickly back there to catch the ball and stop it just like that, so no return, and South Kitsap will have a first down at their own 28-yard line. So we will see what the Wolves come out here on offense doing first. That was an impressive uh, special teams play from Mount Tahoma as they, on the first or second bounce there, managed to down the ball at the 28-yard line, uh, not giving the Wolves a chance to return the ball. So with 10-13 remaining here in the first quarter, South Kitsap comes out first. Gordy Anderson under center. They're going to hand the ball off to Robert Issa. Robert Iso, the ball carrier right there. He's going to gain about uh, three yards on the play. It's going to be second and seven. And uh, Isa has been doing a great job all season long carrying the ball for the Wolves, doing the primary carrying, uh, gaining all just over 1,000 yards, about 1,100 yards on the regular season as uh, we have Isaiah Davis and Leon Ladeau in at wide receiver, both of them the twin, uh, the twin attacks out here tonight. Gordy Anderson, who's coming off in an injury, fakes the handoff, and he's looking for a man. He's got Isaiah Davis down the middle, and the pass is caught at the 40. He's at the 30. He's at the 20. He's at the 10. Five. Touchdown, South Kitsap. And just like that, Isaiah Davis from Gordy Anderson with a 68-yard touchdown pass reception. Isaiah Davis cuts up the middle, catches the pass. Boom, boom, goes in for a quick six. South Kitsap on the second play from scrimmage. Fifth play of the game, Isaiah Davis with a nice touchdown catch, isolated. Uh, Mount Tahoma might want to think that one-on-one -on -one coverage against Isaiah Davis tonight. Six to nothing, South Kitsap. And it was all set up by Gordy Anderson, who does a great job with his ball fakes. And Gordy, uh, he faked the handoff straight up the gut, does a nice job of tucking it right behind him. And uh, Isaiah Davis was just running a slant play down the middle. And uh, Gordy Anderson threw a great pass. Nice reception as uh, I, or no, that's Aaron Ladeau who is in and also. And uh, the extra point is up and it is good. And with 9.26 remaining here in the first quarter of play, South Kitsap is on the board. A 68-yard touchdown pass from Gordy Anderson to Isaiah Davis. And that's something that uh, teams, as uh, South, Kitsap get, South Kitsap gets into the playoffs that uh, they're going to have to be aware of. The one on one coverage against these receivers, Leon Ledeau and Isaiah Davis, not to mention Mike Alonzo, all very effective and all very dangerous and fast receivers for South Kitsap. One of the nice things for the Wolves is that uh, they've got threats from every spot on offense. And uh, to tell you the truth, D Rod, we've been talking a lot about uh, Robert Issa, Chris Nenninger, Gordy Anderson, Leon Ledeau, and Isaiah Davis, and a host of other. Uh, Wolves who have been doing a great job on offense, but uh, where it really all starts is up front on that offensive line, and uh, the South Kitsap offensive line has been doing a great job all year blocking up front, creating big holes for Robert Issa and all the running backs, but also doing a nice job of pass protection for Gordy Anderson. Absolutely. One of the points of pride for South Kitsap football is the not only the play of their defense, but also the play of their line, both sides of the ball, as South Kitsap kicks off. And uh, they're doing a fine job this season protecting Gordy Anderson as Mount Tahoma is tackled on the kickoff return at the 39-yard line. And that's where they'll take over uh, going from our left to right. And we'll see if Mount Tahoma can do more than a, uh, can put together more than a three and out here as they last time they three and out, gave it back to South Kitsap. South Kitsap scores two plays Robert later. Kitsap. They're going to try to uh, maybe mix it up a little bit more against South Kitsap. Uh, running the running the ball up the, up the middle or throwing out in the flat. South Kitsap's ready for those types of things. They've been doing a good – so far, they've done a very good job of rushing the quarterback for Mount Tahoma. Well, we'll see what uh, Mount Tahoma does here. They uh, started off all, all three possessions. Uh, the quarterback for Mount Tahoma is number 11, DeAndre Baines, and uh, he stays in the shotgun formation. He looks out to the flat. Oh, the pass is incomplete. It's over the outstretched arms of the intended receiver, number one, Julian Jones, Jones, but uh, maybe led him Leon just Ledeau. a little too much. Leon Ledeau was right there coming in from the corner. The pass is incomplete, yes, and yeah. Mount Tahoma will now have a second and ten. And uh, D-Rod, like you said, uh, Mount Tahoma is going to have to get something going here. It could be a very long night. Well, we'll, we'll see what they can string together here. Uh, last week they did manage uh, from what I uh, read or and heard was that it's a double overtime victory against Gig Harbor. Uh, fairly unexpected from out Tahoma. So they're riding a little wave of momentum here tonight. So no overlooking, no opponents uh, for South Kitsap. 
Mount Tahoma with the spread offense. Jones goes in motion to the far side of the field. I think he may have turned up a bit, and a flag does go down. Baines has nowhere to throw. He's scrambling out of the pocket, and then he's just going to throw it away. And the pass is incomplete, but uh, number one, Julian Jones was sent in motion to the far side of the field, and he cut up just a little too quick, and we saw that penalty flag come out quickly as this should be an illegal procedure call against Mount Tahoma. And one matchup we should look for tonight is uh, uh, Greg Pickard, number 14 at uh, left end for the, the Wolves. He, uh, he's going up against number 44 uh, for Mount Tahoma on the one-on-one, -on -one, Jamie McKee. Sorry, Jamie Mickey, he's a 6'1", 245-pound senior from Mount Tahoma, and that should be an interesting matchup here tonight. Greg Pickard, also a senior, senior here tonight, who's playing his last home game in a Wolves uniform. So South Kitsap uh, with lead here, 7 to nothing, with 9.09 remaining in the first quarter of play. South Kitsap only had the ball two times on their first possession as uh, Robert Issa had a four-yard run, and then Gordy Anderson hooked up with Isaiah Davis for 68 yards and the score as uh, Mount Tahoma is going to come out now. Uh, they're going to have three in the backfield as Baines is under. Now, now, now they have a new quarterback, and he's sacked. Nice job by Michael Niner in the backfield. He was right in there on defense to take him down. And in at quarterback that time was Michael Allen. Uh, so it looks like uh, Mount Tahoma might be going with the dual quarterbacks here. Well, they're, they tried it there, and South Kitsap not fooled one single bit as Michael Niner gets in there with a couple of other wolves to sack the quarterback. And boy, what an anticipation uh, from the South Kitsap defense. Nice job, South Kitsap, as Mount Tahoma will punt it away. Nice high punt as Isaiah Davis fields it at the 30, drops it. Ball comes out and recovers at the 27-yard line of South Kitsap, which is where they'll take over. A uh, little miscue on the uh, special teams there for Isaiah Davis and the Wolves. Uh, luckily to get it back there, not to give uh, Mount Tahoma a second chance. This is the kind of thing that uh, any coach would uh, want to make sure that doesn't happen, is that you don't get too cute. You make sure that you execute on offense and defense. And right there, Isaiah Davis tried to field the punt, but uh, it slipped through his fingers as the Wolves are going to come out here in full force. Mike Alonzo is now in at wide receiver, split to the far side with Leon Lado. Uh, Robert Issa is the lone setback in the backfield. Anderson, a three-step drop. He's going to look down. They're going to go for Isaiah Davis again. Oh, and it's just over the outstretched hands of Isaiah Davis. He had his man beat at about the 45-yard line, but Anderson led him just a little bit too much. The pass is incomplete, and it'll be second down. But uh, I'll tell you what, D-Rod, it looks like that they're really going to attack those corners. Uh, it really looks like that the South Kitsap uh, offensive coaching staff believes they can exploit the uh, the corners for Mount Tahoma and send the receivers out there one-on-one -on -one coverage and uh, try to beat them. Uh, not a lot, not, not a lot of zone. You don't see a lot of zone uh, in high school football around here, and uh, so we have one-on-one -on -one coverages. Anderson hands the ball up to Issa off right guard. Nothing doing right there. He may have gained a yard Robert on the play, the and it's going to be third and nine for the Wolves. But, uh, like we said, D-Rod, it looks like the Wolves are coming out throwing right away. Absolutely, they're not afraid to. Uh, they're not afraid to throw the ball. Uh, they're doing a very good job of running the ball. They've got a multifaceted attack. And uh, don't put it past the Wolves to throw in a few uh, end arounds and trick plays here and there uh, to throw the Mount Tahoma Thunderbirds off their game. So the Wolves at their, we're going to call this their own 28-yard line. Anderson trying to draw them offside. They're going to fake the handoff. Anderson rolls to his right. He's got a man out in the flat. The intended That's receiver was Greg Pickard. Pickard. But Anderson uh, was faking nobody on that play. And this time, the Wolves are done three and out. So uh, nice job on defense there by Mount Tahoma. Well, both, both sides on defense showing a, showing a nice effort so far. Uh, one play from the Wolves. They've got a 68-yard touchdown. Uh, other than that, it's a 0-0 game. Uh, the Wolves currently reading 7 nothing as you take a look at Coach Sigurdsson there. Not really happy with the, the uh, offensive execution there on that last play. At a, on a third and nine, we've got a fourth and nine punting situation with Leon Ledeau. Back to receive the punt. Michael Allen, Leon Ledeau with Leon a short Ledeau little kick here. Allen comes up. Field and he does. He picks it up at the 40-yard line. It's surprising. Looked like he was going to let it roll, but he decided to pick it up anyways. And uh, it's going to be down right at the 40-yard line. So uh, a little gamble there by Mount Tahoma by uh, Michael Allen. But uh, Allen was able to uh, hang on to the football. And uh, it will be a first and 10 for Mount Tahoma at the 40-yard line. But 
Mount Tahoma is going to have some pretty good field position again right here. Well, and odds are Mount Tahoma is going to be able to string together a good offensive series here. The first two series, not so great. Uh, I imagine that they're going to actually be able to do something here. And uh, it's up to the Wolves to decide if they're going to if they're going to play, which they've been doing a very good job of so far. And they're, they are going to be a challenge here, I bet, by Mount Tahoma's offense. A little high snap, Baines. He's looking to his right, rolls out of the pocket. He's looking for a man, stops, looks back to his left. He's got a man down the middle, and the pass is incomplete. Nice defense there by Robert Issa around the 45-yard line. Great job by Issa there covering Julian the pass. Jones, the the intended receiver was Julian Jones Robert coming Issa. across, and uh, the pass was incomplete, though, but a nice little nice defensive stop there. But uh, uh, anyways, good job there by the Wolves on defense, and it's going to be second and 10 for Mount Tahoma. Kind of both sides kind of swa uh, swapping uh, offensive uh, possessions here. The Wolves have had it uh, twice, and this is Mount Tahoma's third offensive possession, and we're only 725, <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, four and a half minutes into the first quarter, five different possessions for each team. Well, or for to total, total for both teams. Mount Tahoma is staying with that spread offense. Now they send a man in motion to the far side of the field. Baines, a little, another high snap, and it goes through his fingers. He picks it up. He's going to roll to his right, be flushed out of the pocket by Ricky Floss. But he, he just throws the ball away. The intended receiver was down it's the field. It was intended for it's Xavier Bazile. But uh, the pass was incomplete because Baines was just trying to get rid of it. Uh, so it's going to be third and long. And uh, looks like they're having a little bit of trouble with the snap to the quarterback from out to home. Well, maybe not too, uh, too used to that shotgun snap, especially here at the high school level, can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Uh, we'll see if Mount Tahoma can, uh, can get it together here and convert on third down. So Mount Tahoma comes out with the spread formation, four wide receivers, two each side. They're going to send another man in motion to the far side of the field. There's a penalty flag, and Baines is rolling. He's flushed out of the pocket. He's looking down the field, and he's got a man. And boy, it's for a second there. Really I thought the that play. they were going to call a holding on defense by Ben really Slyke, but there were two penalty Brazil, flags Brazil. right when the ball was snapped. And that's usually in the area of an illegal coming, procedure, coming so they might just bring it all back. Slyke. Probably going to come all back. Come, come back. I think they'll. South Kitsap will uh, accept it and give them the yards and do the down, redo the down. And it looks like, and it is, it's an illegal formation against Mount Tahoma, so they're going to, they're discussing it down there with the captains. And the yeah, formation uh, that's going to be refused, so they're going to turn it into fourth down, and they're going to let Mount Tahoma kick the, the ball world. away. The ball's going to be back at the original line of scrimmage at the 40-yard line. My bad, I thought yeah, it was second yeah, down. Right. So they're going from the second down, uh, and actually they, I think that Mount Tahoma might just like to punt on second down. You never know. You never know. But uh, they're going to kick the ball away here on fourth down, standing at about the 30-yard line back to his seat. Nice punt. Van Slyke, he's going to have the ball. Oh, and he's down on his knees. Good and job of hanging down to the ball. Down at the 30-yard line. Down at the 30 yard line. So just like that, a 30-yard kick, and South Kitsap is going to have the ball once again with 7.04 remaining here in this contest. Still leading Mount Tahoma seven to nothing after a 68-yard touchdown strike from Gordy Anderson to Isaiah Davis. Very impressive way to start the game off offensively. Uh, speaking of offense, there hasn't been a lot. There's been uh, four punts, one kickoff, and one touchdown. As this is the sixth total offensive possession, three for each side. Uh, the Wolves. We'll see if they come out a little bit more energized and ready to execute. Although the uh, defensive line from Mount Tahoma doing a good job. Uh, that last time on the. Uh, the, the rollout, they were ready for Gordy Anderson. Anderson under center, he's going to hand the ball off to Issa. Up right guard, he's got a big hole up the middle. Oh, and he hurls over the defender, and he gets all the way down to the 50-yard line. What a run by Robert Issa. 20 yards all the way down to midfield. Very impressive from Issa, the, the uh, young man, the senior, uh, showing his stuff there and just having an all-around excellent season. Uh, show, showing everybody what he can do hurtling a defender there in the secondary and going for an extra 10 yards. Picking a, up picking up first down. What a nice run by Issa. 20-yard pickup as he uh, just literally hurtled Thank over the Robert. defender. The and he got the Wolves a big pickup here. Yeah, Anderson under center. Slot formation near the side. They're going to hand the ball off to Issa one more time on the counter. He tries to juke a jive. Dicks his head down and he just Robert hits the man the and he barrels forward. Nice he job by Issa as uh, he just stuck him right line. with his helmet and he barreled down. So he's hurdling and he's hitting and he's gaining some yards. Hey man, if he, if he jumps over that guy, he might pick up a couple extra yards. What's he doing? 
No, a very good run from Robert Issa there, uh, again, on the, on the counter. And, uh, boy, the Wolves, the uh, last couple of plays, really chewing up some yards and, and uh, showing Mount Tahoma how, how the running game works. So South Kitsap with a couple of big first down plays here, runs of 20 and 15 yards by Robert Issa. Anderson is going to give the quick handoff to Chris Denninger straight up the middle. Oh, what a nice move. Gets to the outside. He's down to the 10, to the 5. He's going to get into the end zone for the touchdown. Touchdown, South Kitsap. Nice block from Leon Mado as Chris Denninger just puts his hand on number 9's back. Uh, Leon and Chris Denninger up the middle and bounces out to the right side. And boom, another six points for South Kitsap, 13-0. A 35-yard touchdown run by Chris Denninger and D-Rod. They've been running that play quite a bit this year where Issa, even though Issa gets a lot of the carries, they run that quick dive right up the middle trying to catch the, the defensive line off guard. Great blocking up front with a giant hole, and Nenager goes in for the touchdown. And that play is nothing without excellent blocking from the offensive line, hitting uh, the defensive line quick and hitting them hard and creating the hole for Chris Nenager, number 37, on that play, bouncing out right for the touchdown for South Kitsap. Aaron Ladeau with the extra point, and it looks like there was somebody offsides, and there was uh, on the a, uh, one of the defenders for the Thunderbirds trying to get in there just a little bit early, but uh, most likely penalties on extra points are usually assessed on the following kickoff, so we will see what they will do here, and it was it was offsides against Mount Tahoma for the extra point. But uh, they are, they're going to scoot them forward uh, half the distance. So it'll be not just a chip shot, but it'll be a really easy chip shot. This will be a one and a half yards closer as they usually spot it at the three. That's, so this is the one and a half yard line. That's right. As uh, Aaron Ladeau stays in, a lot of times we've seen Isaiah Davis do the kicking duties, but Aaron Ladeau is in there now and also doing a great job as the kick is up and it is good. And South Kitsap gets and on the board one more time with a 35 yard Ladeau. touchdown run by the senior Chris Nenninger. And South Kitsap now leads Mount Tahoma 14 to nothing with 6.02 remaining here to play in the first quarter. And that was all ground attack there for South Kitsap. And I don't think we saw the ball up in the air one time on that possession and a couple of big runs, one, two from, uh, three big runs, two from Robert Issa and one from Chris Nenninger there to finish it off for the touchdown. Nice run as you can see the, on the replay, you can see Chris Nenninger scoring for the South Kitsap Wolves with uh, Leon, Ledoux, Leon Ledoux doing a great job of blocking for Chris Nenninger, former classmates together at Cedric Junior High, which is where they played football, along with Gordy Anderson and Mike Alonzo and Keith Gray and some other guys. It was a great All run. seniors. It was a great run right up the middle, but Nanninger did a nice job of running. He got straight up the gut and a couple of Mount Tahoma defenders coming right at him. He Aaron just kept going straight and he just juke and jive his way to the right side. He shook off a couple of defenders and was able to get into the end zone for the touchdown. Well, Chris Nanninger, he's, he's a smart kid. He's, uh, and I can't him. call him a kid anymore. He's a senior. And he's, <laughs> Uh, he's a young man now, and he's just a really intelligent uh, maneuver there to uh, scamper into the end zone as South Kitsap gets ready to kick off. So Aaron Ladeau with the little squib kick, and it's going to go to the right-hand side, and it goes all. Oh, goes. The interesting thing was that the ball has to go 10 yards. We'll see where they spot it. It's actually going to be spotted inside the 40-yard line. So uh, Mount Tahoma would have gotten the ball no matter what. Uh, in, in a way, because the ball has to go 10 yards uh, before it is touched and in order for South Kitsap to get the ball. I don't think they were going for an onside kick. They were just trying to do a little short squib kick. Well, if, if South Kitsap uh, keeping Mount Tahoma on their toes there with the uh, special teams kicking game. Uh, maybe Mount Tahoma not ready for that. We certainly weren't. And uh, Mount Tahoma takes over on offense again. So they have the ball at just inside the 40-yard line. They're the first run of the game for, no, about the second run of the game, I guess. And, and uh, they do they hand it off to the running carrier. back uh, for Mount Tahoma, who doesn't do a lot. Uh, we'll see that they might the give him about yard a yard. That is Jordan Davidson. Yeah, Oops, excuse me, that is uh, number nine. That is number nine. Uh, we're trying to get a we're trying to get a player roster here. That's Charlandez Powell for the Mount Tahoma Thunderbirds. He gets maybe we're going to call it a very long one yard, and it's going to be second and nine for Mount Tahoma. Mount South Tahoma usually going for the spread offense here, but it's a little tighter, D. Rod. Absolutely, they've uh, tightened up the package a little bit here, and they're uh, 
They're going back to the running game, looking like 23 ice off the right side there. And they are, and this time that was number eight. That was Jordan Davidson uh, with the carry as they have the uh, one lead blocker, two running backs, uh, getting a couple of big blockers up front. And uh, now we're starting to see Shot a big uh, 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 I think not the Homa. Uh, yeah, this is their fourth possession. No points to show Decker. for it. And they've got to mix, that, mix it up a little bit. Otherwise, they, look like, they feel like they might get blown out here. And uh, they are... Uh, doing their best to keep the ball out of South Kitsap's hands at this point, I think, is the, is the game strategy. Like you said, Mount Tahoma had some, uh, had some momentum coming into this game with a, an incredible double overtime victory over Gig Harbor last week, and Baines is going to fake the handoff, and he rolls to his left, but the defense is right there for the yeah, run. He snuck him out. Keeper, he is very close the down to the first down line. marker. It is going to be just Tackled inside there by Leon the Ledeau. Ledeau. right at midfield. But Mount Tahoma only needs about one yard. And uh, D-Rod, I can imagine Mount Tahoma's probably going to go for it here. I would say that down 14 nothing in the first quarter, uh, that this is <laughs> already four down territory, which you don't usually talk about until, it towards, until it's the uh, fourth quarter. But uh, their backs are already against the wall. They're down 14. It's fourth, sorry, fourth and one, and they're going to go for it. I would do the same thing. So Mount Tahoma needs just one yard to get the first down. It's going to be fourth and short here. Is it going to come out? in that uh, power running formation. Baines under center, they're gonna hand the ball off to the fullback and he is met hard. That is Bo Otak up front, also number 52 for the Wolves, a whole mess of Wolves. That was Ricky Floss and he knocked it back. Well, yeah, man, he knocked right. it back, but not before a very generous carry. spot gives the first down, Mount Tahoma the first down, first down on Tahoma. the play. It'll be first and ten, Mount Tahoma at the 49 and yeah, three quarter Ross. yard line. Oh, Boy, last that. week uh, we saw some uh, uh, pie and ice cream discussion, and this week we're seeing some major early Christmas that gifts That was here. a very charitable gift. As uh, that wall, uh, they ran right into that wall of Ricky Bloss, and he is... A great athlete, one big man, and it sure looked like he stopped him, but like you said, the favorable spot. And Mount Tahoma will have the first down at the South Kitsap 48-yard line. And uh, that run is not going anywhere as he got to the 47-and-a-half-yard line. Not even the world's most generous spot will give him the first down on that one as the Wolves' uh, defense steps up. Uh, the defensive line creates a wall and stops the run attack on that Mount Tahoma play. It will be 39 and uh, South gets up just doing a nice solid job on defense here, trying to uh, force them into fourth down situations, making Mount Tahoma punt. And they've been doing a very good job of that tonight. Well, it'll be generous. It's gonna be second and nine here for the Thunderbirds and they're gonna, Baines fakes the handoff and he's just gonna keep it and roll up the middle and the ball is loose and it is recovered by Isaiah Davis for South Kitsap. Baines faked the handoff, kept it on the quarterback keeper rolling left and he fumbled the ball when he first got hit and uh, the ball went sailing out to the near side of the field and right there to scoop it up was Isaiah Davis. Isaiah Davis uh, doing a lot of different things tonight, scoring a touchdown on offense, recovering the lost fumble there as the, the Wolves defense was in on the ball and attacking as you see a good look at our uh, very enthusiastic and very talented band who will be traveling to uh, Pasadena, California this winter for the road to the Tournament of Roses Parade. So the first turnover, Gordy Anderson, he's gonna look for Leon Ledeau out the flat. He makes the catch, oh, and he gets right by his man, and there goes Ledeau, and he's gone, he's at the five. Five, touchdown, South Kitsap. The yeah. first play from scrimmage after the turnover. It's going to be a 52-yard touchdown pass reception from Gordy Anderson to Leon Ledeau. Leon Ledeau really uh, showing his one-on-one -on -one moves there. Last week it was Isaiah Davis. Leon Ledeau showing a bit of his stuff, and actually earlier in the game, Robert Issa showing a couple of his th a couple of his moves. Leon's turn now. That's 20 to nothing. South Kitsap here with 2:28 left in the first quarter. Nice catch and run from Leon. Once again. Uh, all man-to-man -man coverage here uh, for Mount Tahoma's uh, defense is there's just too many weapons for South Kitsap. South Kitsap, uh, this is actually par for the course for South Kitsap as they had come into uh, as we go to the kick and it is up and it is good. Aaron Ledeau with the third extra, extra point, point here tonight as uh, South Kitsap now leads Mount Tahoma 21 to nothing. Oh, this is a nice pass play right there. Leon Ledeau, he made a little stutter step and uh, he gets right by the defender and he goes in for the touchdown. 
So South Kitsap now leads Mount Tahoma 21 to nothing here as, um, and we are still in the first quarter of play. And D-Rod, this, like we were saying earlier, this is par for the course because South Kitsap comes into tonight's contest averaging almost 30 points a game. Yeah, and so far they've already, uh, they're two thirds of the way to that, uh, that margin is they've got 21 uh, early points up on the board here. It's been uh, pass, run, pass for touchdowns. And spreading it around, uh, many different guys touching the ball, uh, three different guys scoring. That's one thing about South Kitsap is it's not just two guys. It's it's the entire offense that really makes makes that scoring machine go. And this year, it's just yeah, really been know, a pleasure to watch it. them do their thing and and just simply attack other teams and exploit uh, exploit weaknesses. And boy, they just really doing a good job. Great job from the South Kitsap yeah, coaching really staff. Twenty one nothing South Kitsap. Not even done with the first quarter yet, uh, quarter yet. So this game is not over. South Kitsap kicks off again to Mount Tahoma. Aaron Ladeau with the quick kick. It was touched by a Mount Tahoma up man, but uh, it was recovered by Michael Allen by down Michael near Allen. the 25-yard line. Allen, nice job of just falling on the ball, not trying to get cute, create another turnover. But a uh, couple of just nothing but big plays here tonight. The first score came uh, Gordy Anderson hooked up with Isaiah Davis for 68 yards in the score on their on another offensive possession. Chris Nanninger runs 35 yards, and we just saw the 52-yard touchdown pass play and reception from Gordy Anderson to Leon Ledeau. Gordy Anderson having a big night tonight, his second touchdown, Leon Ledeau's first touchdown. Some big numbers for the South Kitsap Wolves off offense thus far here tonight. A Thursday night, uncharacteristic, but here we are, Thursday night football with South Kitsap. So Mount Tahoma will have the ball. Baines is going to hand the ball to the running back. He bounces to the outside. Nice job, Isaiah Davis is right there to snuff him out. But uh, not until uh, the running back for the Thunderbirds gets the first or gets close to the first down. Nice pickup there, about seven, eight yards. As uh, that is Junior Angosia, who is uh, who picked up the uh, the. Uh, Offense, we're trying to get some uh, tallies here for everybody and getting a few numbers here. But uh, it's going to be second and three for Mount Tahoma. Well, we're going to call it at their near their 35 yard line. Mount Tahoma is now spreading it out just a little bit, still in that running formation with the power backs. Baines is going to hand the ball off to the tailback. They run to the near side of the field. Nothing doing right there. I don't know if he did get it. I think that he did. Uh, yeah, he got it. Right. He did. Uh, looking where they spotted the ball, and uh, he will have the first down. So, and I believe that's Mount Tahoma is only their second first down tonight uh, on the ground game. I I, I agree with you there. And uh, South Kitsap's defense doing a great job. But also to pick up that first down, Mount Tahoma's offense there on, on the right side for for their offense did a great job of blocking, creating a, a hole big enough for their man to pick up a first down. It is first and 10, Mount Tahoma. Mount Tahoma with the first down, uh, driving near midfield. Oh, and he's taken back in the backfield. Nice job by the South Kitsap defenders there. A whole flock of wolves right back there that uh, were in there. Oh, and there was, there was a turnover. There was a turnover. I saw a couple of players come up pointing in the direction and uh, Robert Issa came out of that pile there. He plays both ways, offense and defense. He comes out, and sure enough, there was a turnover. South gets that ball. I thought I saw a flag. It was a uh, it was a turnover marker for the, the officials. And once again, South Kitsap recovers the ball here at the Mount Tahoma, about the 32-yard line as Gordy, I believe it's going to be Gordy Anderson, and the Wolves come back out for the attack on the Wolves' offense. This is not what the Mount Tahoma coaches we're thinking of before they came out for the game tonight. Especially uh, trailing 21 to nothing with a minute 12 left here in the first quarter of play. But we do have a I'm stoppage of play as there's going to be a timeout by Mount Tahoma. But uh, like we were saying earlier, D-Rod, you know, the Wolves are coming out here showing that potent offense that they've had. They struggled a little bit earlier this year. Uh, it took a little criticism too for not putting up a whole lot of points on the board. But you know what? Um, no one's really going to be listening to criticism when you're winning ball games. A W is a W, and I uh, commend, we both commend uh, the South Kitsap Wolves football coaching staff for doing such a great job this year. Uh, the special teams, offense, defense, on the field, off the field, these, uh, they, they really are training these young men to be uh, solid citizens, uh, both on and off the field, doing a great job. They, uh, it's, all, it's all business. When, they, when they're playing, but they, I've noticed that, that towards the end of games, they're helping guys up. Even through this undefeated season, there's no 
There's no taunting, no nothing like that. I don't think the Wolves coaches would put up for it, and I just like seeing the sportsmanship uh, put forth by these Wolves players. Plus, the Wolves are, have been battling injury all season long, and it uh, looks like they're relatively healthy now as Anderson's going to fake the handoff. He's going to go down. He's got Lee on the dough in stride, and he hits him for the touchdown. And just like that, South Kitsap gets on the board one more time. A 32-yard touchdown pass from Gordy Anderson, his third of the night, to Leon Ledeau, his second touchdown of the night. Now, I didn't see his route, but I'm guessing this. I'm guessing that he faked in and left his guy hanging and sprinted, sprinted up the middle, and boy, a nice, nice, uh, nice fake route, I'm guessing, from Leon as he probably faked his hands back in towards the quarterback about 5, 10 yards up the route and then sprinted up up the middle of the field wide open for a touchdown. It's 27 nothing as Aaron Ledeau lines up for the extra point kick. South Kitsap with another score here tonight, make it, looking to make it 28 to nothing, and it will be as the kick is up and good. Here's the replay on that last touchdown pass. Ledeau with on the far side of the field, you'll see the play right here as he barrels down and he's gonna make a nice little move and he cuts inside. The defender looked like he kind of stumbled, lost his cha change as he was trying to change direction. Anderson throws a really nice ball and Ledeau was right there to make the catch. Anderson, as Anderson is not gonna miss that, that throw. He's not gonna overthrow anybody. He's a very accurate quarterback. Uh, I've been watching him play since he was a ninth grader at uh, Cedric Junior High School here in Port Orchard and been nothing but impressed with his, uh, his work ethic and his commitment to playing solid football here at South Kitsap. So Gordy Anderson having a big night here on offense for the Wolves. Once again, uh, the team leader, one of the team leaders for the Wolves, a senior, as uh, he just threw his third touchdown pass of the night to uh, Leon Ledeau, who now has two touchdowns. We also saw touchdown scores for Isaiah Davis and for Chris Nettinger. So it's uh, being spread out all over the place. One run, three pass, and uh, D-Rod, that just kind of shows uh, the capabilities that the Wolves had to attack you at every angle. Absolutely, and I know there's gonna be teams that are gonna be scouting the Wolves here tonight, uh, next week, uh, seeing the teams that are possibly gonna be playing the Wolves. I certainly wouldn't want to play South Kitsap right now. The kick is uh, squibbed down the left-hand side. Mount Tahoma gets the kickoff, and uh, they will have decent field position one more time just past the 40-yard line. But uh, D-Rod, uh, Mount Tahoma is going to have to start making something happen here on offense. They're going to have to get that ball past that 50-yard line. Uh, that's going to be kind of the, that's their hump is that middle of the field, the 50-yard line. And, and something else that's been hurting them is the two turnovers, the fumbles that have both turned into South Kitsap touchdowns. They have to stop turning the ball over. They do a good job when they keep the ball on the ground, and I think that if they can do that, they might actually be able to get into the end zone. And you never know what can happen. We're only in the first quarter with 57 seconds left. Well, in basketball, we always have a saying that it, uh, the key factors of a game are free throws and turnovers, and in this game of football, uh, we sure have seen that the turnovers have been a factor as well. Absolutely. So. Uh, Mount Tahoma is going to look to try and hang on to that ball as Baines is still under center. They've got the power running formation. They're going to hand the ball with the quick hit right up the middle with the fullback, but uh, nowhere doing. Nice defensive stop there by the Wolves. That's big number 79. That's Shamari Burton who is in there on the tackle, along with number 55, Keith Gray. Uh, Ricky Bloss and Austin Cook also help make up that very, very good and very deep defensive line for the Wolves. Wolves uh, not fooled at all on the uh, quick handoff from Mount Tahoma as uh, the clock winds down here, 25 seconds left in the quarter. Uh, boy, that's a nice job of sniffing out that play. Nothing doing as they push it back a yard. Second and 11 for Mount Tahoma. Also up on that defensive line, number 64, Thomas Decker to help anchor that as uh, the Wolves are going to have one last play here to try and stop him as Mount Tahoma gets the ball to the tailback to the far outside, but he's swarmed by a pack of Wolves as uh, South Kitsap uh, quickly surrounding the ball there, but uh, the, the Thunderbirds finally get a little bit on the play there as um, we're going to uh, see a, an exchange here. That is the end of the first quarter of play, and um, we're going to 
Uh, let's see here. Between the first and second quarter, we're going to try and get the. Uh, we're going to try and send it down to Cameron Brown down on the field here, if uh, if we can find him, and we'll uh, we'll wait for a little signal to find him down there. But until then, D Rod, I'll tell you what. South Kitsap is putting up some big numbers here. Hi, in the first hi this is Cameron go. Brown again, coming to you live from the football field on this beautiful night. Well, not so beautiful. It's about 48 degrees here, but come on, what do you expect? It's football weather, people. All right, I'm here with Sammy Freeman and Kayleen Eddings. Sammy Furman? Yes, Sammy Furman. All right. And despite the cold weather, it hasn't stopped some people from coming out here to support the football team. How you guys doing? Woo! All right, now, would you guys say you're super fans? I would say so, yes. Do you guys do the whole painting thing where you're all decked out? I have, but it's too cold tonight. Yeah, okay, I see you guys just out there in nothing but body paint, and I'm like, how could anyone do that? Okay, so what makes you do that? Are you, like, just huge on SK Spirit right now? Sure. <laughs> all right. The, the big question is, if we keep up this lead, then we have an undefeated regular season. Do you think we have what it takes to make in the playoff season? Yes. Definitely. Okay, some people are enthused. Now, I've been Cameron Brown, keeping you live down the field. Throwing it back to D-Bow and D-Rod in the booth. Thanks, Cameron, uh, for that sideline report there as the first play from scrimmage for this start of the second quarter. Now, Tahoma had a big scramble to the right side. Baines was looking for a man well down the field, but the pass was incomplete. And it's going to be second and se or fourth and seven now for Mount Tahoma as uh, Mount Tahoma looks like they're going to kick the ball away here. They're not going to get too cute. They don't want to give the Wolves any good field position. And it is. It's going to be a kick, a nice kick straight down the middle as uh, there's a fair catch. Van Slyke calls for a fair catch, but he's going to let it bounce, and it'll get all the way down to the South Kitsap 20-yard line. So Mount Tahoma has to kick the ball away, not being able to get anything going on offense, and uh, we'll see what happens here. Uh, D-Rod, it looks like uh, we're going to have a few substitutions in the game already early on um, as the Wolves are going to come out here uh, on offense. Well, I'm sure during the time out there in the first quarter, towards the end of the first quarter and also between quarters for the Mount Tahoma uh, T-Birds that their defensive coach or the head coach probably reminded the, the Thunderbirds how to, you know, what the principles of defense are and what they should do to get back in this game. And that's going to start with defense for them, keeping the Wolves off the board. Anderson's going to hand the ball off to Issa. He's got a little bit of a hole on the left-hand side, puts his head down, but nice defensive stop there by the Thunderbirds on defense. Issa had a little bit of an opening, but uh, the Thunderbirds were quickly there to snuff that play out. Looked like number nine on the tackle there for, uh, for Mount Tahoma. That's, that's Powell once again with the tackle for the Thunderbirds. That's a, nice, that's a nice assist there. You bet. Yeah, yeah. Shoot you betcha. Yeah, shoot yeah. We're, we're like a team up yeah. here. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Teamwork. A one-yard gain by Robert Issa, and South Kitsap will have a second and nine from their own 21-yard line, deep in their own territory. Anderson's going to hand the ball off to Issa one more time. Looked like he, oh, and he stays on his feet. Looked like he was going to lose his footing. Barrels his way forward and is able to get the first down. And for a second there, it looked like Issa was going to be taken down. He started tripping up a little bit, but he maintained his balance and kept going forward. Oh, he's just tough. He's not going down easy. He's gonna, you're going to have to tackle Robert Issa to take him down. He's not just going to fall down on his own. And, uh, boy, he's just tough. Really, I've said this before tonight already, but just a very impressive season. I did not realize how many yards he had until we were up in the booth last week, and uh, it seems that he's surpassed the 1,000-yard mark. It's very impressive for a high school player. First down for the Wolves. They're going to have it. They're getting closer to mid midfield. Anderson's going to fake. He's going to roll to his right. Good stop on defense. He's got a man out in the flat. That's Austin Cook. That's he had the ball at near his own 45-yard line. Just a little bit high on the pass, but still nonetheless very catchable. And uh, Cook was not able to haul it in. The pass is incomplete, and it's going to be second and 10 for the Wolves. Austin Cook not happy with himself for being unable to haul that pass in. It's not the pros, but if the ball's in your area, you need to be able to bring it in. I'm sure he'll catch the next one as uh, you don't see Gordy going to number 45 Austin Cook too very often. So he'll be thinking about that one again. And next time the ball comes in his area, I, I bet you he's going to catch it. In the, ball, in the ball game now for the Wolves on the near side of the field, Ray Chico, as they're going to hand the ball straight up the middle. There goes the fullback on the quick hit. Nice run there for the Wolves. That's number 41. J.C. Parker, Parker got the quick hit. That was the same play they ran for the 
35 yards. He's a 35 yard touchdown run and about right there. In fact, I think Parker got it just a little bit more on that carry. Oh boy, South Kitsap this year just comes at you in so many different directions. Unpredictable and it seems that every play is unexpected. Defenses just get caught off guards, uh, off guards. They get caught off guard, they're not really sure how to, to deal with what South Kitsap is throwing at them. Very difficult to adjust to what South Kitsap does on offense. So the Wolves in business deep into Mount Tahoma territory. The ball is at the Mount Tahoma 35 yard line. They're gonna hand the ball off to Justin Anderson one more time. He's gonna juke and jive his way forward and he just keeps those legs driving. Nice job by Jordan Anderson. And uh, he was able to get a gain of about, oh, about 12, we're gonna call it 13 yards on the play. And he gets all the way down to the Mount Tahoma 22 yard line. Wow, just a offensive clinic so far here from the South Kitsap Wolves is their running attack is really in sync, not to mention the passing attack. And it's uh, looking looking like tough times right now for Mount Tahoma as South Kitsap's got a first down on the Mount Tahoma 22 yard line. Gordy Anderson under center. Oh, and it looks like that they were gonna go off sides there for just a second, but they didn't call it. Anderson's got a man out in the flat and the ball is just a little bit high. The pass was intended for number 14, Pickard, Greg Pickard. But it was incomplete, a little bit high on that one too. But again, d it hit him right in the hands. Yeah, Greg would like to have that one back. And uh, going to the tight ends a little bit here uh, for South Kitsap as uh, the usually sure-handed receivers. Greg Pickard, uh, we know, is coming off being ill for about a month and still probably not 100%. He'd like to have that one back. And earlier I said that uh, the running back was Justin Anderson, but it was really Jordan Anderson because d -Rod, that's our good friend Justin, Justin Anderson. Justin Anderson, shout out. Yeah, big shout out for Justin, who uh, was one of our assistant basketball coaches, who is now back in Oklahoma City. Uh, guarding the, the coast. Guarding the coast. As the ball is fumbled! The ball was fumbled by Jordan Anderson, and I believe it's going to be a turnover, and it is. And so South Kitsap had a golden opportunity to do some more damage here deep in Mount Tahoma territory. That's number 30, Alex uh, Ayata, on the fumble recovery, the senior. And he, uh, right time, right place. And boy, South Kitsap looking like they're going to punch in another one. Not exactly what the South Kitsap coaches had in mind. The defense is going to have to dig in here and get that ball back. Anderson had the carry. He's been doing a great job actually coming in all year when he does come in the game, but that time he fumbled the ball and Ayata was right there and he said, Ayata, pick up the ball Absolute, and just recover it. Absolutely, and a rare offensive miscue for South Kitsap on that play. So the first turnover for the Wolves here with 9.09 remaining, still leading 28 nothing. Baines, he's going for it all. He's got a man down the sideline. Oh, and it's just off the fingertips of the intended receiver. Nice job. That was Xavier Bazile who had, he, he was he was in stride and uh, it was still actually good coverage there by the Wolves. Oh, and, absolutely. And uh, it looked like Bazile was able to get his fingertips on it, but just a little bit too far. The pass is incomplete and it'll be second down for Mount Tahoma. Uh, we're placing that ball at their own 18 yard line. That's number 39, DeAndre Van Slyke there on the coverage, doing a good job of covering, but uh, you know, Mount Tahoma's saying, hey, you can throw the ball, we can throw the ball, and they're you know testing out their sea legs with the passing game right now. Bazil and Josh Trailer are the wide receivers for Mount Tahoma as they come out in the power running formation. Baines drops back, looks to his right. He's got Bazil who tried to stop and cut back to the ball but he slipped, did, uh, did a little hurdle stretch there on the ground almost. Well, this the pass a, was incomplete, this and it'll be third is, down from Mount Tahoma. This field is pretty muddy, pretty yeah, slick. Uh, it's been raining yeah, quite a bit here. We've yeah, been pretty lucky yeah. the last two weeks. It's rained all day or all day the day before or both. And by the time we get up here to the booth, the rain stops. So that's good for everybody involved as, you know, the traction on the field gets a lot more slippery when it rains. It's nice that it let up. The field is still muddy and slick. Especially here tonight when the uh, weather forecast was predicting uh, heavy rain here tonight, but uh, they couldn't have been blessed with better weather, weather as uh, Mount Tahoma is going to have a third and 10 from their 18. Baines drops straight back. He's got a man, and he looked like he was going in motion, and they are. They're going to call it an incomplete pass. Baines was hit by Austin Cook in his throwing motion. But boy, was that close to being a fumble. And boy, well, did he get hit hard by Austin Cook coming around that right corner. And oh, Austin doing a great job of getting to the ball before it could be uh, completed for a pass. Nice job, South Kitsap defense. And uh, just as the doctor ordered, a three and out from Mount Tahoma. They really opened up the passing game on, on that possession. And they're going to punt to South Kitsap. 
Give it right back to him. Mount Tahoma with the punt, and it's going to be a short end over and kick down the middle, and it is fielded by Van Slyke. He let the ball bounce, didn't look like he was going to take it, but he finally did. A uh, little bit of a dangerous uh, gamble right there, but it paid off once again. Yeah. And yeah, uh, tell you, Slyke right though, South Kitsap was driving, and uh, they Jones. had a turnover. They fumbled the ball, and but uh, Mount Tahoma just, just couldn't get anything going off the turnover. Well, that, that was an opportunity for Mount Tahoma, even though they didn't have very good field position. They got the ball back on a uh, turnover. They tried to go for a big strike up the right sideline, which if successful, they would have picked up a, a big chunk of yards, if not a touchdown. It didn't work out for them, and they end up punting the ball back. As they did open up the passing game there a little bit, no runs for Mount Tahoma in the last possession. Gordy Anderson is in. He's going to fake the handoff, roll to his left. He's got a man out the flat. That's Greg Pickard. He's got the ball at the 30. He's at the 25, at the 20, and he gets all the way down near the 15-yard line. Nice pass play from Gordy Anderson to Greg, Greg Pickard for about a, we're going to call that about a 20, almost a, about a 20, about a 23-yard gain. About a 23-yard gain right there. We're trying to get all of our numbers here at the same time it's and, just a, and announce. They're so fast and furious coming at us all at once, it's hard to keep track of it all, but the South Kitsap Wolves offense really doing a good job of picking up first downs, especially here in the, in the last about uh, 10 minutes of game time. They sputtered a couple times there at the beginning of the game, but right now they're on track. They got the ball back, and uh, they are in the proverbial red zone at the 17 of Mount Tahoma. First down. South Kitsap has the ball at the Mount Tahoma 17-yard line. They're hoping not to turn the ball over here on this one. They're going to hand the ball straight up the middle to Issa. Issa gets back in the game here, and he just keeps those legs pumping forward, and he gets a big gain, almost a first down. They get inside. He's get a gain of about nine yards. They needed to get to the seven-yard line for a first down. And they're going to down it uh, at about, we're going to call that the eight-yard line, a gain of nine, where it's going to be second two for the Wolves. Well, the, the Wolves looking in prime condition again here to pick up another score, if not a touchdown, at least a field goal. And it's second and two, as you just said, DB, and the Wolves lining up with two wideouts against Mount Tahoma. Anderson's going to give the ball to Justin to Jordan Anderson one more time. I keep saying Justin because I'm so used to Coach Anderson, but that's Jordan Anderson, Jordan Anderson doing a nice there. job there. This time he hangs on to the ball and gets a little bit closer to that first down as uh, Jordan was able to get closer. Uh, we'll, give it a, uh, a, we'll give him one on the play, but still going to be third and short, third and one for the Wolves. Uh, place that ball at the Mount Tahoma eight-yard line. See if Mount Tahoma's defense here can step up and keep the Wolves out of the end zone. A lot of weapons on the ground and in the air for the Wolves. We'll see what they throw at Mount Tahoma on third down. Just under seven minutes here to go. Third and short for the Wolves. They can still get a first down. They're going to hand the ball off to Michael Niner, who skips his way and into the Michael end zone. The touchdown floor. South Kitsap. Michael Niner with the eight-yard touchdown run. Not a lot that Mount Tahoma could do there as South Kitsap's offense just uh, – Steamrolling their way into the end zone, creating a big hole for Michael Niner. Another six points. South Kitsap, it's 34 to nothing. South Kitsap with the big hole on the left side of that offensive line. And Michael Niner is able to get in there for the eight yard touchdown. And that is uh, South Kitsap's fifth touchdown of the night. One, two, three, four, five, fifth touchdown. That's a huge first half for any football team. That was the uh, second running touchdown here tonight. Gordy Anderson has three touchdown passes for the Wolves. The snap is up and it's it's uh, they're scrambling around. It was a high snap and uh, they couldn't get it down. Ray Chico uh, was unable to get the ball down but it was a high snap. Hard to hang on to that ball. Aaron Ladeau came up for the kick and the kick is going to be no good so uh, even so There's the touchdown will attack. stand and South Kitsap now leads Mount Tahoma 34 to nothing here with 642 remaining in the first half. Well South Kitsap's offense just continues to roll here and Mount Tahoma is a little shell shocked at the moment. Uh, South Kitsap unable to convert on that last point after try. Still 34 nothing here with 642 left in the second quarter. Not really how any coach would draw it up that uh, you want to be down uh, 34 points with the, uh, with the goose egg on the board. And as you see the South Kitsap band there showing their support for the football team and just really a clinic here in the first half for South Kitsap's offense. So South Kitsap gets on the board one more time. Michael Niner, an eight yard touchdown run. The second run this evening, the first run was by Chris Nenninger. 
uh, earlier in the game had a 35 yard touchdown run, but uh, uh, we've seen a big night from Gordy Anderson, three touchdown passes, two to Leon Ledeau, and one to Isaiah Davis. So uh, just coming out with a well-balanced attack on the run and the pass. Well, you can say that you've got five touchdowns midway through the second quarter and uh, four guys have scored for you uh, on touchdowns. That is, that's huge. Uh, r really shows the, uh, the intensity of the South Kitsap uh, offensive attack. Not letting up at all here tonight against Mount Tahoma. South Kitsap kicking off here one more time. It's going to be a squib kick to the far right side of the field. Nice job by Mount Tahoma to just fall on the ball. They will have the ball at their own 35-yard line. It was recovered there by number 81, Xavier Bazil. And uh, Mount Tahoma, and I'll tell you what, I give Mount Tahoma, they've had a couple of turnovers, but they really haven't done anything uh, along the way of making bad mistakes. They've been trying to execute on offense and uh, they've been doing smart things like that, not trying to pick the ball up and get too nope, cute. Nope, and South Kitsap, I think, trying to keep the ball out of the receiver's hands from Mount Tahoma. Don't want to make this a game and give them a chance to score a touchdown on a kickoff return. Mount Tahoma, like you said, DB, not really uh, doing too, too much to hurt themselves other than uh, not picking up first downs and turning the ball over twice. Other than that, they look, they look okay. Baines under center. They're going to hand the ball off to the tailback, who is taken down in the backfield by Michael Niner. What a great tackle on defense by Niner, and they're going to give him about a four-yard loss on the run. Oh, number 40 for, uh, for Mount Tahoma there. That's Josh Iverson. Looks like a, a fullback, 5'10", 165 junior, not able to get enough momentum or leverage on, or angle there to avoid... Is that Austin Cook or is that Michael Niner on the tackle? Michael Niner on the tackle and uh, Niner, who's already queued up, keyed up from being, scoring the last touchdown, gets in there on the tackle. So he does it on offense, scoring a touchdown, comes out on defense and gets the tackle for a big four-yard loss. Mount Tahoma will have a second and 14 from their own 32-yard line. They stay in that power running game in the backfield. Baines is going to hand the ball off. He's almost tackled before he hands the ball off, but he does give the ball. Oh, what a big hit! Oh my goodness, coming in from the side, that was a huge hit on defense. That was number nine, Leon Ledeau right there on defense. And I say this every game for South Kitsap, and I men mention it right now, we've got uh, Solani, number five, Bo Otak, the senior nine, helping Leon up the, uh, the Mount Tahoma rusher there after the play. I love to see the sportsmanship, and it's not just me, it's the coaches and everybody in the community love seeing Good sportsmanship when you're up or you're down helping guys up off the field. Also in on that tackle was number six, Tanner Romo for the Wolves. So a lot of Wolves getting in here uh, for some playing time. The Thunderbirds, oh, they're going to have a quick quarterback keeper. Baines is hit, spins around, and he inches his way forward. He's going to be just short of the first down. But uh, they caught the uh, they caught the Wolves off guard just a little bit there on defense. Well, they had no, uh, the Wolves had a no um, middle linebackers there at all, and the middle secondary there wide open and took advantage of it able to get up and pick up I believe almost a first down just a tad short Ooh, looks like they are short they are Baines wasn't able to get the first down they're going to be about a yard short a very short yard and uh, the Thunderbirds don't want to get cute so they are going to kick the ball away the ball is at their own 44 yard line the kick or the snap is back and they're going to fake it they're going to run it and get the first down oh and he's tripped up stays on his feet Mount Tahoma is going to have the first down Isaiah Davis out there on the tackle and just like that Mount Tahoma goes for the fake punt and they are going to have instead of a one yard gain it's going to be about a 17 yard gain all the way down to the South Kitsap 39 yard line great call by the Mount Tahoma uh, offense, the punting team, the uh, special teams go for the fake, catching South Kitsap just a little bit off guard, not totally. They almost had him uh, for a loss and the turnover on downs, but uh, the fake punt there, able to pick up the first down and more as he, the Mount Tahoma uh, punter there really just had to be wrestled down there on the far sideline and didn't get his number, but boy, nice fake and pick up of a first down for Mount Tahoma. So Mount Tahoma trying to get something done here on offense, trailing 34 to nothing in the first half of play against South Kitsap. Baines is going to drop back. He looks to his left. He's out of man. Down the middle, and the ball is caught. Nice pass reception. Excellent catch, and that's Bazil right there with the catch. A gain of about 15 yards on the play and a couple of big runs. First the fake punt, and now the big 15-yard touchdown or the 15-yard catch from... 
Bazil or Ka Bazil made the catch from Bain. So nice job by the Thunderbirds here getting something going on offense. Well, a little alarm clock must have gone off in somebody's head here because the offense all of a sudden they 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 are awake and they are kicking as they're trying to punch it into the end zone as they are marching on South Kitsap's defense. Baines under center, Mount Tahoma trying to get on the board here before halftime. Baines is going to drop straight back, looking to his right. He's got Basile one more time. He's got him in the end zone. He jumps up. Oh, and he catches it. Touchdown, Mount Tahoma. I do not know what to make of it. They're showing no life on offense, essentially, for the first the 20 minutes of this game. And all of a sudden, 18 minutes of this game, and all of a sudden, Mount Tahoma wakes up. This is why DJ Sigurdsson and the coaching staff not afraid to put up, run up the score because you never know what can happen We're only in the second quarter. It's 34-6. to six. South Kitsap over Mount Tahoma as Mount Tahoma just scores a touchdown off a fake punt, fourth and one, pick up 17 yards, two passing plays in a row, and touchdown Mount Tahoma. Just like that, Mount Tahoma gets on the board. That was Baines with the nice touchdown pass, a 25-yard touchdown pass reception. They're going to go for two, and they get the, and that is good. They go for the two-point conversion, and they do convert it. So Mount Tahoma with the got nothing to lose attitude here. They go for two points after they score the touchdown. It's 34 to eight, South Kitsap. This game is far from over. Ask any coach or player. Baines hit Josh Trailer in the left side of the end zone. The extra point is good as they went for two. As South Kitsap now leads Mount Tahoma 34 to eight with 338 remaining here in the in the first half of play. And D Rod. Like we've stated on many occasions, this is the kind of thing when you have a big lead that you don't want to get too cute or you want to make sure that you keep going hard all the time and not let your opponent back in the game. You don't want to get warm and comfy and cozy and, and complacent and think, oh, we've got this thing wrapped up. I think that South Kitsap, uh, weren't they weren't necessarily ready for that. I don't think they were lazy or asleep. I just don't think that they were ready for that. We certainly didn't see any indication that the offense had any sort of weapon uh, at all, and all of a sudden, Bazil catches two passes, the second one for a touchdown. Isaiah Davis and Leon Ledeau will be back to receive the kickoff. This is the Mount Tahoma's first kickoff of the night, but uh, you're right, D-Rod, just like you said, uh, Baines, his primary receiver was Bazil, and uh, looked like he caught the ball and was heading to Brazil after a couple of those catches. Oh boy, he was he, he did a very good job of one-on-one -on -one coverage there in the end zone, of jumping up and catching that ball. I thought it was gonna be tapped away or blocked. We'll see what Mount Tahoma does here on the kickoff. That's going to be a short pooch kick over the first sec, uh, first line of, of uh, defenders there on special teams for South Kitsap as they recover on the far sideline about the 35 yard line. About the 30 yard line. That's where South Kitsap will take over. At 34 to 8. 338 left here in the second quarter. South Kitsap, I'm going to guess, is going to keep the ball on the ground, eat up some clock, try to kill that momentum that Mount Tahoma just just picked up there with that touchdown. They're gonna run the clock down and they're gonna try to punch it in before the end of the first half. So South Kitsap is gonna have the ball at their own 31 yard line. There is 338 remaining here in the first quarter of play. And I'll bet you South Kitsap just goes on the attack as JC Parker is now in at fullback for the Wolves. Slot formation to the near side of the field. Anderson is gonna fake the handoff. He's gonna look for a man out the flat and that's Isaiah Davis with the nice catch all the way down to the 45 yard line where it'll be a first down Anderson to Isaiah Davis once again. That's a dangerous uh, connection, a one-two punch there. Uh, Anderson at quarterback and Davis at receiver. Davis is so fast and really has developed a good set of hands here by South Kitsap football. And boy, that's just really, really tough uh, to defend that as he just uh, crossing over the middle of the field. Ladeau and Davis are going to split to the far side of the field now. Ladeau in the slot, Isaiah Davis spread to the far side. They have to watch out, two dangerous wide men on the far side of the field. Anderson's gonna give the ball to Robert Issa on the little counter and he's got a little stutter step and he's taken down, crosses midfield, gets all the way down to Mount Tahoma's 40 yard line and d route the Wolves are on the move. They are on the move, they're chewing up some clock and they are slowly but surely marching towards uh, Mount Tahoma. Um, Mount Tahoma's end zone is they're going to try to punch in another touchdown here before the end of the half and uh, looking good once again not uh, I think we're a little surprised to see Mount Tahoma put up that last touchdown and I don't think they made the the Wolves team or coaches feel very comfortable I think they're going to really try to control the ball here nothing fancy nothing special Mike Alonzo and Ray Chico now in the game at wide receiver for the Wolves 
Anderson under center, he's gonna hand the fake, the handoff, he's got a man down the middle and he's got him and that's Greg Pickard! Nice defensive stop there by Mount Tahoma though. That's Robert Donald who came flying in from the side and uh, he was able to knock the ball down as we have a man down on the play and that looks like it's the quarterback, Gordy Anderson. We'll see, uh, we'll see if what happened with Gordy here. It looked like he could have got play, popped. Uh, didn't really have any visibility. Mike Alonzo there open on the left side. He uh, had to rush that ball off, got popped there as soon as he uh, released the ball as Gordy Anderson hops up, uh, feeling a little bit of pain. Uh, it's good to see him up and moving. Anderson has, uh, he battled injury earlier on this season. Uh, he missed a couple, two or three games earlier this season with a bad back, and uh, that's the kind of thing that uh, the South Kitsap coaches don't want to see, but they will definitely have their backup quarterback come into the game, and that is the junior, number six, Tanner Romo, who's ready to step right in. Yeah, Gordy Anderson did uh, battle a little bit of injury. He comes off the field. He's tough. Uh, uh, Leon Ledeau, the first guy on the sideline there to make sure Gordy's okay. Romo filling in for Gordy Anderson at quarterback. Romo under center is going to hand the ball right up the middle, right up the gut to Michael Niner. He hurls over a man himself, took a couple of lessons Michael from Robert Niner. Issa earlier yeah, there in the first quarter, and he jumps up with joy as he gets a big gain of about 15 yards all the way down to the Mount Tahoma 23. Uh, the, these, these South Kitsap uh, tailbacks, running backs, are sure fun to watch. You see uh, Michael Niner showing a lot of positive emotion there. Kyler just... Uh, keep those legs moving and pick up positive yardage uh, past, as they get past the line into the secondary and just really fun to watch these guys work so hard to pick up these tough yards. Really a joy to watch them. South Kitsap with the big first down play here. Michael Niner with a huge 15 yard run down at the 23 of Mount Tahoma looking to get some points on the board. They're gonna hand the ball off to Justin Jordan Anderson. See D-Rod, I said it again. Just call him I, coach, just call him just coach. Just call him coach, you bet. Coach because, Anderson. Because I'll tell you what, Jordan Anderson just coached Mount Tahoma right there <laughs> off right tackle. Nice run by Jordan, Jordan Anderson, as uh, he gained about four yards on the play. It's gonna be second and, now oh, we're gonna call it three yards on the play. I bet Jordan Anderson's gonna be talking to you tomorrow at school. He will be, he's gonna come up to me with a couple of flashcards. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, one with Jordan and one with Justin, and he's going to have the name Justin crossed out. <laughs> uh, Jordan Anderson doing a great job tonight. He South is Kitsap. doing a great job. The quick handoff straight up the middle, but nothing doing. South Mount Kitsap. Tahoma right there to stop it, and okay, they may have gained there. one on the play. In fact, they're going to lose about a yard on the play. It's going to be third and long for the Wolves. South Kitsap just wants to keep the clock moving. If uh, Mount Tahoma calls some timeouts to stop the clock, they can go ahead and do that. But as we see Gordy Anderson come back in, uh, for the Wolves on this third and seven situation. So Gordy Anderson comes back into the game, shaking up a little bit a couple of plays earlier as Leon Ledeau and Isaiah Davis split to the far side of the field. Anderson's gonna hand the ball off to Robert Issa. He hits the hole hard, but uh, nothing doing. I don't think he was able to get the first down. We'll see where they mark it. Uh, sure looked like he got a, a better spot than that, but uh, he only got a couple yards Robert of the play, the and it's going to be fourth Josh down Iverson. for the Wolves. We're going to call it fourth and five from the Mount Tahoma 17. I'm going to guess the Wolves are going to go for it here, try to pick up the first down, stop the clock, and uh, try to pick up another touchdown, probably keep it in the air after they pick up the first down here. South Kitsap looking to do some damage again with 23 seconds left remaining here in the first half. Anderson's gonna give the ball on the counter. That's Robert Issa, he tries to cut up the middle. He does and he gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Robert Issa with the 17 yard touchdown run and the Wolves are back on the board. Boy, he is tough. Issa and Niner and, uh, and Anderson, they just keep those legs moving. Neninger, just a multifaceted running attack for the South Kitsap Wolves tonight. And that is Issa's second touchdown of the evening, I believe. Really putting up some big numbers here on the ground attack for the Wolves. Just really doing a great job of spreading it out. 15 seconds left in the first half. 40-8 to eight South Kitsap as I believe it's Aaron Ledeau lining up for the extra point for South Kitsap. Robert Issa with the 17-yard touchdown run, his second of the night. Doing a great job of keeping his balance. Doing an excellent job there is the snap. It is back, the kick is up, and it is good. And with 15 seconds remaining here in the first half, South Kitsap now yeah, leads Mount Tahoma 41 good. to eight. And uh, I'll tell you, D-Rod, um, I can only guess that maybe uh, with such a big half of numbers, of course, I guess we're gonna have to wait and see what the defense does as well, uh, because this game is by no means over, but with such a big lead, 
Uh, and with the playoffs coming up next week, you might be thinking maybe that the coaches might be giving some other players a little bit of playing time. Absolutely, especially after seeing Gordy Anderson uh, going down there for a second, coming back and finishing the last couple of plays there for the Wolves. Uh, doing a, doing a uh, Gordy coming back and doing a great job of uh, making sure the ball gets punched in there for the score. 41 to 8 South Kitsap. Uh, as we see the South Kitsap cheerleaders doing their uh, ceremonial push ups after a touchdown. The band getting ready to come out on the field as the uh, Wolves special teams coach Jim Fairweather talks to the uh, kickoff team before kicking back off to Mount Tahoma. Well, Mount Tahoma trying to get something done here on offense, but I can only imagine that they're not going to be getting too cute here. Probably uh, going to be taking this kickoff and either just getting as much as they can out of it or uh, they're just going to try and maybe land on the ball and let time run out here. But uh, South Kitsap, uh, D-Rod going well over their average of 29.9 points a game, uh, almost nearly 30 points a game, and uh, putting up 41 here in the first half of play as the ball is going to be back near the... Uh, 13 yard line and uh, he tries to go forward and he does nice job that's Michael Allen for the Thunderbirds he had the ball near his own 10 yard line and he gets all the way out to his own 31 a return of 21 yards and with just over eight seconds remaining here Mount Tahoma I can't imagine that they're going to try and get cute but you never know D-Rod they might try and go for the the old Hail Mary you never know I, uh, you know if it was me and it's not me but if it was me I would uh, I would chuck it up there I would absolutely chuck it up, and you never know what's going to happen. Uh, you don't want your quarterback to get hit either, because once you know, once you start throwing up hail marys, that's when you're when you're uh, throwing more guys out into the uh, receiver routes and less guys that are blocking. So, who knows? We'll see what Mount Tahoma does here, as they do bring out four wide receivers. They do. They're coming back out in that spread offense one more time, and they are. They're going to go for it, and they're just going to pass the ball out in the flat. <laughs> Michael Niner was right there on the coverage, and he almost had the interception. And if he did. I'm telling you, D-Rod, he had nothing but greenery in front of him. Boy, it was it was party city if he if he catches that. It looked like he was going to – he kind of had to scoop it up almost off the off the shoe tops a little bit. And if he, had, he almost had it. He would have been going the other way for a touchdown. That would have been a, that would have been a huge knockout blow for the Wolves. Well, Niners scored earlier on an eight-yard touchdown run, and that would have been a defensive score, but uh, – he was unable to hang on to the ball. The pass was incomplete. A little high snap. Baines looking to his left. He's got a man down the middle, and the uh, receiver is Bazil. And Bazil caught the ball near the 45-yard line. There, there goes Bazil. Bazil is chased out of bounds. Time has run off the clock. He gets all the way down near the 30-yard line, but there is a penalty flag hey, down on the field. And if that's I'll on Mount Tahoma, they will the you they line. will end this because you can't There's end uh you, but can't if it's end, on, can't, uh, you can't end it on an offensive penalty you cannot or a, a, on a, a defensive, defensive penalty, penalty but if it's correct. on the, if it's the offense it'll be halftime we'll see what the referees call here that's a warning on the home team for something not it's, sure. It was a sideline warning. Not, not, not an on-the-field warning. Not an on-the-field warning. Oh, it was a, it's for the players not being in the box. It was a sideline warning against South Kitsap. They threw the penalty flag because all the players and the coaches have to be in a designated area uh, while play is going on, and I guess the officials felt that they weren't there as uh, the South Kitsap coach uh, Adam Knaus goes out there to get clarification about that. But uh, anyways, nonetheless, South Kitsap, even with the big play, Still leads Mount Tahoma 41 to 8 heading into halftime. So, uh, anyways, that will be halftime, and now uh, we're going to throw it down to uh, one of South Kitsap High School's video student aces down on the field, Cameron Brown, with the halftime show. Take it away, Cameron. Hi, this is Cameron Brown coming to you once again for the halftime report. As you can see, the Wolves are absolutely destroying the competition with a score of 41 to 8. If they can just hold defense, we may quickly be on our way to an undefeated season. And I'd like to take this opportunity to give a shout out to my boys, Cody McBride, Robert Easta, Leon Ledeau, and all the boys of the SK football team for having a fantastic season. Now, as it is senior night, uh, right behind me we have senior cheerleaders and senior band members who are giving their regards to their parents. Um, for all their loving support through these many years. We'll get back to that in a little bit, but right now, we have some videos to show you. Now, football's pretty awesome, but wouldn't it be more awesome if they had swords? Yeah, I thought so. So, if you don't know what we're talking about, 
I am, of course, referencing Henry V, Stout's fall production, which comes out in less than two weeks. If you want more information, take a look at this story produced by our very own Michael McLaren. The works of historical playwright William Shakespeare have always been timeless classics. They've stood the test of time, and even now, decades after Shakespeare's death, are still being put on in productions throughout the world, even high school theater programs. South Kitsap High School's theater students are currently rehearsing for an early November production of one of Shakespeare's most famous plays, Henry V. Henry V is a history play that was written by Shakespeare in 1599. It is based on the adult life of King Henry V of England and focuses on the events directly before and after the Battle of Agincourt against France during the Hundred Years' War. So basically, um, there's an archbishop and he wants lands back from France. So he convinces Henry to declare war on France. Putting on a Shakespearean production has proven to be massively difficult for these dedicated students. The language is definitely tough to break down. Contempt. And anything that may not misbecome the mighty sender doth he prize you at. But after months of rehearsal under their belt, they are ready and determined to get the job done. Another huge element within the show is the induction of stage combat. This is the first time SKHS has ever included stage combat in any of its shows, which is a good thing because Henry V definitely calls for it multiple times. The fighting cast had spent virtually all summer preparing for their roles as the English and French noblemen. After we practiced enough, I think fighting with broadswords became kind of like a second nature. And the fights themselves get pretty intense as well. You really feel like you're this like super bad warrior who can like completely decimate anyone in his path. Sometimes I wish I had a sword and I could just pretend stab people because it looks like so much fun. Scott Yingling, one of the school's two main drama teachers, had edited down and is directing this production. Uh, I fell in love with uh, I fell in love with Shakespeare in ninth grade when I read uh, Romeo and Juliet. I've been thinking about doing Henry for about eight years, and I knew I was going to have a lot of returning seniors and juniors and stuff. I knew it was going to be a good time to do it. You guys need to react to that because, dude, he just... His dedication to this show and his love for Shakespeare's art is what drives the cast to always put their all into every rehearsal. All in all, the show is looking to be a very big production. With a large cast, great acting, and a memorable storyline, this show is likely to become one of SKHS's best stage productions of all time. You can come see Henry V in the main theater at South Kitsap High School on the first and second weekends of November. Those are just some of the super fans here on this fantastic night for a football game. Um, as you can see, those are the parents of the senior cheerleaders who just passed by, giving their regards and a special ceremony to their loving daughters. Right behind us, the band is about to do a, uh, seems like a performance, uh, also for senior night. And um, it seems like they're about to begin. We'll come back to that in a little bit. But in the meantime, we have another story for you. Now, while our last story was about Henry V, our second story is also acting related. It is, of course, our very own South Kids Have Acting Ensemble. These very talented students are working very hard. And in fact, they're having an emergency improv night tomorrow to try and raise money for the helpline, which is desperately in need of food. For more information, check out this story by Molly Sands. Where will we go on Friday, September 25th at about 7.30 p.m. at home? Well, over 200 people were gathering at that time in the South Kitsap Theater with plans to enjoy a night of fun and side-splitting laughter. What everyone has been anticipating since the beginning of the school year is the first improv night, and it did not disappoint. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. 
this year we have a new cast of people in acting ensemble, and even in the first few weeks of school, they have shown their potential and skill. First up, we have a returning member, Michael McLaren, and the cheerleader, Gone Theater Kid, Danica Geiger. The senior, Annie Rose Kafer. Third, we got a Miss Danny Crable. The girl extraordinaire, Katie Bailey. Next, we have senior, Monica Demena. Macaulay Fox is present. Brianne Hahn is rocking the scene. Chris Garland is on the improv team. Mr. Robert Lucy. We at Wolf Tracks got to sit down with Mr. Yingling and speak with him about the 2009-2010 ensemble. I think that they are a very mature group. I think that they uh, work extremely hard. Uh, they're a very close group. Um, I think this group, more than any, are very performance focused. And they like, a uh, majority of them want to go into a performing arts school, so I think it helps out with what we do in class. And, um, you know, I really hope that they can take what they learn in my class and apply it to real life. Um, I want to be, uh, for them, I want them to be able to go to an audition for Cornish, Juilliard, NYU, uh, USC, um, you know, any of these big schools and be able to be like, dude, not only can we uh, do well, but we can hang with the best high school acting programs in the country. The hopes and expectations are high for Mr. Y as well as the student body for this year's ensemble. But the actors feel that they can all live up to everyone's standards. It seems that the theater has made its decision about acting ensemble, and it's good. Have you made yours? If not, come see Acting Ensemble next chance you get. This was a really bad time to go parachuting! <laughs> All right, and I'd just like to clarify that emergency improv night, the admission is two cans of food, which of course will be donated directly to the helpline. It is at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. I hope to see you there. Now, as you can see, the band is introducing their senior parents and giving out various honors. Uh, pretty much the uh, seniors who are in the band are simultaneously introducing their parents and uh, pretty much just thanking them for all the hard work that they've done in raising them and supporting them in their high school lives. Now, uh, throwing you back to another story, you are of course watching SKTV Wave Cable Channel 205, but have you ever wondered what kind of work goes into making this production possible? Well, here to tell us what it's all about is Danae Hamill with an exclusive behind the scenes look at SKTV. You may have seen all the filmed events on SKTV, but you probably haven't seen what the SKHS video production puts into these events. This is what they do for home football games all season long. Even though the game doesn't start until 7, the crew meets up at 5-ish. Pre-game stuff, oh my gosh, people running around, there's crazy people everywhere, we're getting stuff for the halftime show, and it's so much fun. These are some of the things we do before every event. This over here. What? What's in it? Quesadilla. Quesadilla is in it. And greens! Mm. I just want to have it. Go! Okay, that's enough. The song is gold. Thanks, you owe me a soda. Oh. And it's <laughs> Pizza is provided by the school as the crew shows up. Please say that for us. There's usually about a half an hour to hang out before Mr. Johnson's briefing. The briefing usually takes about five minutes, then it's time to get ready to work. You gotta do it, you gotta set everything up, you gotta get ready, get organized. You gotta be there for a good game. During events, there is no time to relax. Everyone is doing something. There are two people on the rear cameras, one on the field, and a director, a technical director, and an audio person in the control room. Each person rotates with another throughout the night. Every station comes with ups and downs, as always. You know, nothing, any like technical problem is never the end of the world. They're easily fixable. As the crowd files out of the stands, the crew stays behind to tear down the equipment, whether it be taking down cameras, coiling cables, or pushing carts. Everyone pitches in to make cleanup go as quick as possible. Since you've seen what goes on behind the scenes of the football games you love so much, you come to find a lot of work goes into filming them. Yeah, yeah. Alright, 
as you can hear, the band is playing. So we're going to throw it over to them and uh, listen for a couple minutes. That was the SK Band, who will, of course, be playing at the Pasadena, at the Pasadena Rose Bowl um, later this year. Uh, later in the show, stay tuned, and I'll have an exclusive interview with Gary Grams, our band director, who is working frivolously to raise funds for this exclusive trip. Now, throwing it over to uh, one more story. We have Carissa Cruz talking about the prom closet, which is supplying, of course, dresses for the prom. For more information, take a look at this. What has South Kitsap girls all dressed up? And students taking pictures? That's right. Prom closet! Prom closet! Prom closet! Prom closet! Right, prom closet. A place where one can find dresses for almost any event. Has South Kitsap students working hard to give out a helping hand and also get the word out to the community about prom closet. Last year, around February, um, the Community Transition Program, that portable across the parking lot, started a program working with Helpline to collect dresses that students could check out for prom. And now what's happening is they're trying to provide some publicity for their program and also uh, show what, what you can look like and how you can dress up for your special occasion by having students model those dresses which brings my classes into the program. I'm teaching beginning and intermediate clothing. So we've paired up with the fashion photography students or the photography classes, and they are doing some um, fashion shoots today so that they can advertise the prom closet as well as get some experience in their chosen career. Not like put it up on the With direction from photography, the beautiful faces from clothing, students spend all day hard at work. Hi, I'm Brandy. Hi, I'm Tasha. And we're modeling dresses for prom closet um, from beginning clothing. And our definition of prom closet would be dresses that people donate for other people to wear for dances or something. And to borrow a dress, all you have to do is donate like a can of food or something to the food drive. Everyone got to strut their stuff, be it by modeling or behind the camera, students seem to be enjoying themselves. Look how cute that is. I know, it's not really good. Um, I think it's fun because it's out of our range of what we've been doing for the past like three weeks. All we've been doing is uh, different projects and this is out of our range so I think it's really fun to just go out and do different things. And to be able to do something like this for the community and help out people who need stuff like this is quite a good experience as well. Who exactly is in charge of Prom Closet? Hi, I'm Diane. I'm Christy. And we work with the Community Transition Program, which, was, which is a part of South Kitsap High School. Our involvement with the Prom Closet is um, we house the clothing, the dresses and shoes and purses and stuff that the girls borrow for prom. And boys. And boys. <laughs> that they borrow for prom, homecoming, any occasion that um, that they would may need to broad. Hi, I'm Mr. Davis. I teach photography here at South Kitsap High School. Well, we had the opportunity uh, with Mrs. Hewitt's uh, clothing and fashion class to have them come in uh, with gowns on that are the gowns I understand are offered to students for various dance opportunities. and. Um, to, to photograph them and this is great for our class because these are the advanced students, uh, the studio students who now have a chance to, uh, to put into practice what we've talked about uh, in class or the kind of photo shoots that they've done in the past. So this is a great way for them to get um, uh, some real world experience and they did a fantastic job. They, they threw me out a little while ago because they were just handling things well so that was great for me. The day was pretty successful and full of a lot of hard work from all the students. And all for...
awesome stories we have for you. Remember, pro TV program here at South Kid Sound. Now, halftime is just about over. Before we go, I'm going to throw it over to the band one more time. This has been Cameron Brown keeping you live down the field, throwing it back to the bands. job from the South Kitsap High School marching band there with the, uh, the, the Bon Jovi montage along with the uh, Magical Mystery Tour there at the end. Wow, great job from the band. This is D-Rod back up here in the booth. Uh, boy, the, the band continues to impress another source of community pride here in Port Orchard as they are raising funds and getting ready to go down to Pasadena, California this winter over holiday break for the Tournament of Roses Parade in California. What an honor for, uh, for the, the band members and Gary Grahams and everybody else and the parents and the volunteers who help out with the band. We are sure proud of the SK High School Marching Band and boy, they look great and they sound great. And uh, boy, uh, as a former band member myself back in the uh, early 90s, I can certainly say that this group is uh, so, so, there's so much uh, to be proud of, and we are so glad to see them. As we see the cheerleaders, another source of pride here for uh, Port Orchardites here in South Kitsap, and uh, South Kitsap High School just doing a great job of, of uh, showing off their band. The cheerleaders doing a great job, and the football team sure looking good tonight as they're up 41 to 8 as we await the Mount Tahoma Thunderbirds to come back out onto the field. South Kitsap ready to go. The field a little bit muddy here tonight. Uh, you can see about the 35 yard line. Chopped up, a bit muddy. Uh, apparently the Mount Tahoma football team is getting a little bit of a talking to right now. And ooh, they almost take out one of the officials as they come back out of the field. But South Kitsap ready to go. and. Uh, Uh, in this going into the second half and we will throw it down to Cameron and Santos on the sideline for a report go ahead uh, Mr. Santos our uh, sports director hey um so obviously if we keep up the streak we're gonna have an undefeated regular season how difficult is that to achieve is that a rarity in this in these uh, games oh absolutely we uh, the last time South Kitsap was undefeated was uh, 2002 so it's been uh, seven years since we've had an undefeated regular season so it is very difficult to do and uh, to all the people uh, watching at home um, what's next for the Wolves if they do get undefeated like what's the playoff schedule gonna look like well it's still a little bit muddled we do know we play the Southwest Washington number two team so the second best team in the greater St. Helens League uh, the issue is that we do not know who we're going to play yet because uh, tomorrow night some of those teams play and if everything works out there could be a three-way tie for second place in that uh, league and so they'll have to have a mini playoff on Monday night to determine who the second place finisher in that league is so we may not know until uh, late Monday night early t Tuesday morning to who we play next now, um, I've heard that there was some talk about hosting a playoff game here, but that our field uh, had some issues with that. Is, is that true? Is, do you know anything about that? Well, it's actually not because our field has any issues. It's because it's a uh, WIA rule that uh, state-level competition, state-level games for both soccer and for football have to be played on uh, some kind of artificial surface. All right, and uh, one more question. Obviously, uh, you handle all types of sports. Uh, what can you tell the people about home, as the fall uh, season's wrapping up, what can you tell people about home about what to look forward to in South in the winter uh, trimester? 
Well, during our winter season, we have both boys and girls basketball. Our girls basketball team uh, went to the state uh, tournament last year, and, and our boys team is always a perennial power in our league. And then we also have our boy, our wrestling team, and our wrestling team has not lost a Narrows League dual meet since 1992. So uh, we have, and we have our girls bowling team, which is placed uh, a couple of years ago, placed third in state. So we have lots of great things with, and boys swimming as well, looks like a, maybe a top five finisher as well. All right, uh, thank you very much for talking to us. Uh, once again, uh, Mr. Santos, our sports director here at South Kitsap, throwing it back to Darren Bowden in the booth. Thanks, Cameron, for that uh, great sideline interview there with uh, our athletic director here at South Kitsap High School, Mr. Ed Santos who uh, helped explain just a little bit further what the possible playoff scenarios would be. And uh, D-Rod, like uh, Ed Santos was saying, uh, we're still not quite sure what it's going to be looking like for next week uh, because undefeated or not, going into next week, uh, South Kitsap will be playing the Southwest number 2 team. But uh, that will be determined, especially uh, after the games that are played tomorrow night. And at worst, that uh, there are going to there could be uh, depending on the outcomes of tomorrow night's games down in uh, the Vancouver area, uh, there could be a little mini playoff to determine who that number two seed is. Quick question for uh, fans at home. Is that a single elimination tournament loser out? This is. Uh, every game from now on will be an elimination game uh, loser out game. So uh, South Kitsap uh, will be hosting that game as well. And uh, that also is still to be determined exactly where it will be and because of the WIA rule that all playoff games have to be played on artificial turf of some kind. South Kitsap being the home team, they will get uh, to play uh, either. It looks like they're going to try and be scheduling the game over at Peninsula High School on their artificial surface, or it will be at Silverdale Stadium most likely. So we will have to wait and see exactly where that will be determined. And we'll just keep an eye out on the uh, internet and uh, in the newspapers to find out where that game's going to be. Keep your ears open. This will be the last time we'll be able to inform you about any upcoming games as this is our final home game of the season for the South Good Kitsap Wolves. It has been an honor and a privilege to be uh, up in the booth for this season as Mount Tahoma gets ready to kick off to the Wolves from our right to left. We'll see if they actually kick it off or if they squib it as the Wolves have been doing tonight. So South Kitsap will get the kickoff. Ball up near the 30-yard line. The ball is taken by Chris Nanninger. He does a nice job of hanging on to the ball, stays right in the middle, and he is going to get near midfield as Nanninger is going to have almost Chris about Nanninger a about a 17-yard return. The ball will be placed the at the over. South Kitsap 48-yard line near midfield. Nice run by a really nice run by Nanninger as uh, South Kitsap will come out here. They are leading this contest 41-8 to over the Mount Tahoma Thunderbirds. This is the final regular season game, which also happens to be a home game here at Joe Knowles Field on the campus of South Kitsap High School as the first unit for the Wolves will come back out onto the field. Isaiah Davis and Leon Ledeau on the near side of the field. Anderson's going to hand the ball off to Robert Issa. He stutter steps, stays on his feet, tries to inch his way a little bit farther forward. Robert he gains about carrier. five yards on the plate. It's going to be Rocks second and five for the Wolves. Tough yards for Issa there to get wrapped up on the ankle and just tries to scoot his way forward to hopping up, hopping up. He uh, gets taken down, but uh, a couple of hard-fought inches there for Issa as he just continues his his uh, running spectacle here tonight. He scored twice and picked up a bunch of yards, adding to his already uh, borderline massive season total. South Kitsap with a second five here. They are now into Mount Tahoma territory already. Their kickoff return gets them near midfield. Chris Nenninger, and they're going to hit Isaiah Davis in the flat out by the 40-yard line. Nice pass now by Anderson, Isaiah, and that should be enough for the He's first down. down. They're going to mark it uh, forward progress line. at the 40-yard line where the Wolves will have a first down. Well, that's the second time they've uh, run that play tonight. Uh, Isaiah, the Davis, uh, Isaiah Davis coming across the middle there, just dumping off over the middle and hope for some good blocks and at least pick up the first down. Isaiah is always a dangerous receiver. So the Wolves are in business here at the start of the second half, leading Mount Tahoma 41-8 in the final home game of the season and the final regular season game. Anderson is going to fake. They're going to hand the ball off to Robert. He's, oh, and he's just tripped up. Nice shoestring tackle there on defense. Robert That's number 10, Barry. Michael he's Allen for the Thunderbirds. And uh, he, had he not tripped him up right there, Issa had a lot of room to run. Nice tackle for Michael Allen. They're kind of a do-it-all guy for the Mount Tahoma Thunderbirds. Uh, nice job 
uh, bringing Issa down as Issa had a big head of steam coming up the middle on the counter. And boy, nice tackles, and possibly touchdown saving tackle there from Michael Allen of the T-Birds. Gain of four on the play. It'll be second and six for the Wolves. They're going to hand the ball up to Michael Niner one more time, and he inches his way forward. Niner doing a nice job of ball carrying here this evening. He's going to gain about uh, four yards in the play. It's going to be third and two for the Wolves. But uh, D-Rod, like we've been saying, uh, not just all year, but also tonight, uh, one of the reasons why these running backs, Issa and Niner and Nenninger and everybody has been able to get uh, a lot of yards is because that big offensive line creating some big holes. Absolutely, the offensive line for the South Kitsap Wolves doing a stellar job, not only tonight but all season long, creating, creating holes where they need to be and a lot of running space for those running backs. So third and short, we're going to call it third and one for the Wolves. Anderson is going to fake the handoff, roll out to his right. Nice job. He's got a man out the flat. Greg Pickard's got the ball at the 20. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. Touchdown, South Kitsap. Greg Pickard with the 31-yard touchdown pass reception from Gordy Anderson, his fourth touchdown pass of tonight. Greg Pickard coming back from being sick. That's got to feel great for him. Our tight end coming in, scoring the touchdown pass out there on the right sideline. Touchdown, South Kitsap. Touchdown, number 14. Greg Pickard, the senior, 47 to eight. And there's a, oh, I thought it was a flag, it's a football. Now we noticed earlier when the teams were coming out from halftime that there was a penalty flag out on the field uh, near midfield uh, around the 40 yard line as the uh, South Kitsap Wolves were all lined up, looked like the seniors were looking to go out for the, uh, uh, like they would at the, at the coin toss. And uh, there was a penalty flag and I couldn't quite catch what the penalty was, but it looked like that they called it yeah, sportsmanlike no, conduct at good. South Kitsap even before the kickoff, and I wasn't sure what the penalty was. It must have been for probably you can't have more than four players come out uh, for to, as representatives of, as captains for the football team for the uh, midfield handshake and uh, coin toss even at halftime. And I'm guessing that they either. They could have assessed a penalty to the Mount Tahoma for coming out of the locker room late, or it could have been a penalty against South Kitsap for uh, too many too many captains at midfield at, the, at half. Before. Well, the official came out and he and he ruled and he signaled an unsportsmanlike conduct, but then he said that the penalty was declined. So uh, it seemed like it was all for naught. We still don't know what the Oops, penalty was about. Uh, I think that uh, they called the penalty on the South, on the Wolves. I'm guessing if it was declined, that means that the Mount Tahoma coaching staff said, uh, "No, we're not going to do that to." Uh, to the seniors, the exactly. Senior, senior night, because all, all those extra guys out there for South Kitsap are all seniors. Well, the kick was up and good. So a classy move from Mount Tahoma. And, and, and the the 31 yard good. touchdown pass reception by Greg Pickard, thrown from Gordy Anderson, who's having a big night tonight, coach, with his fourth touchdown pass. Two to Leon Ladeau, one to Isaiah Davis, and now another one here to Greg Pickard, as the Wolves now lead Mount Tahoma 48 to eight as Aaron Ladeau is gonna kick the ball off here. Mount Tahoma's gonna have the ball at their own 18 yard line. They fake the handoff on the reverse and he's being chased down from behind, doing a lot of running east and west. And he's being chased out of bounds by Chris Nenninger who rides him out of bounds. But there is a penalty flag on the far side near the Mount Tahoma sideline. About the 40 yard line, we'll have to see, check what the penalty is. Out of bounds by Aaron Ladeau. Legal block in the back of some kind against the, uh, the receiving team, but uh, not really the area you'd expect it. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. So we'll have to wait and see what the penalty is all about here. South Kitsap on the big touchdown pass reception to start the second half. That's uh, players outside the box, I believe, for Mount Tahoma. Warning. And yeah, it is, it's a sideline warning. warning against the uh, the Mount Tahoma Thunderbirds. So we've seen one of those on both sides here tonight. Uh, the South Kitsap Wolves had one just right before halftime. And now the Mount Tahoma Thunderbirds get one just after halftime, but nonetheless, South Kitsap now leading 48 to eight. Mount Tahoma will have the ball at their own 36 yard line. Yeah, the uh, officials really be uh, on top of both sidelines about keeping their players back and uh, both sidelines now step back, at least the players, not necessarily the coaches. Baines with uh, the ball and he's just snuffed out in the backfield. Nice job on defense there. That's Jack big Irish number 52, Ricky Floss and Bo Otak who has been on the attack here tonight. Well, Bo Otak uh, gave us a really big game last That's week as well, and tonight he's uh, playing well again. Just really kind of coming uh, coming around the last couple couple games, as far as I can see, for South Kitsap. Uh, really, the senior Bo Otak regis uh, registering some solid performances here late in the season. 
fact, it's going to be a one-yard loss. The ball will be placed at the Mount Tahoma 35-yard line. Mount, Tah Mount Tahoma coming out with a power running game once again. They're going to hand the ball off to the tailback in the backfield, but nothing doing right there, and he's hit hard. What a big hit on defense. Nice job by number five, Otak on the attack again. Dang, we just keep calling his number, and he's just uh, doing a great job for South Kitsap. I mean, but, you know, just <laughs> Both end, both sides of the field, uh, both sides of the ball, doing a great Led job. Bo Otak, Bo Otak. Yeah, just can't help from calling his number if he's in on every play. Uh, eight Peter minutes yards. left in the third quarter, 48 to eight, South Kitsap. Third to 11, no gain on the play. Mount Tahoma will come up to the line, one uh, one wide out, uh, th two back, uh, three backs. Baines is under center. They send the lone wide receiver to the far side. Baines, he's gonna drop back, and he's going for a man. He's trying to needle it in there, and the ball is intercepted. The ball is intercepted by Bounce Slide. He stays on his feet, he's got a couple of blockers. He's hit, stays on his feet, keeps going out to his left. He's still going on his feet. He's down to the five, and he's finally taken down, but a penalty flag comes flying in there Andre near Van the 10 Slyke yard line. I can't believe that Van Slyke made it all line. the way down that far. Well, he uh, should have been tackled a couple dozen yards to head that before he just kept hopping and hopping jumping around juking and driving and make it up all the way to the left sideline i'm guessing it's going to be an illegal block in the back on south kitsap there's a penalty flag at the nine yard line south kitsap with the interception but it will remain their ball as they had the ball uh band slyke made the interception it will come back to about the 24 yard line 15 yard penalty uh, 10 yard penalty hold uh, it's a hold against South Kitsap. Ten-yard penalty brings it back to the 19. Still, the South Kitsap still in the red zone, as a huge pickoff and return from uh, Van Slyke there for South Kitsap up to the nine-yard uh, line. And what a huge play! South yeah. Kitsap will have the ball at the 19-yard line, first and ten. DeAndre the Van Slyke with the interception got all the way down to about the three-yard line of Mount Tahoma, but. An illegal block in the back. It's still going to give South Kitsap good field position inside their own 20-yard line. They're going to hand the ball up to Jordan Anderson, and I got it right, Coach. Woo! I got it right this time. Yes, yeah. Jordan Anderson, the ghost of Jordan Coach Anderson, Anderson uh, has temporarily been put to rest here on Halloween week. Jordan Anderson with the big run, and uh, he was able. He only got one yard on the play, but big enough, Coach, that I got his name right. And boy, am I feeling really good. I'm feeling really good about what I just did. I, you know, I'm, I'm proud of you. Jordan Anderson will probably feel better as well now that you got his name right finally. So Jordan Anderson with the one yard touch or the one yard run here looking to get into the end zone for another touchdown as uh, Tanner Romo is now in at quarterback for the Wolves. They're going to hand the ball off to Jordan Anderson, but nothing doing. Nice job on defense there by the Thunderbirds. In fact, they're going to get a loss of about two yards on the play. And South Kitsap will be backed up to their own 20 yard line. Good job on defense there by Mount Tahoma. Oh boy, that play snuffed out from the beginning. He's bang, bang, knocked him back. It is going to be third and 11. Uh, about third and 12 for South Kitsap. Uh, third and 11 at the 20 yard line. They have 11 yards to go for the first down at the uh, nine after the penalty on the hold with the uh, interception return by. Uh, Van Slyke. Romo under center. He's going to hand the ball off to Jordan Anderson one more time. He tries to get out of the hands of the defender, but uh, he is dragged down from behind. Nice job on defense by Mount Tahoma. That's number 20. Anderson, 20 okay, no, that is number, number 20 15, for Mount Tahoma. Joseph Eric Doveno for, uh, for the Thunderbirds, but uh, it's going to be fourth down here, and I would imagine that the Wolves are just going to go for it. They uh, get down to the Mount Tahoma 18-yard line. A little, bit, a little bit outside of uh, high school kicking field goal range right here for most kickers, so uh, even if the Wolves don't make it, they'll, they'll have it somewhere. The T-Birds will have it somewhere inside the 20-yard line. So South gets up with a fourth down here. Roma's going to hand the ball up to Jordan Anderson. He gets out to the outside. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. Touchdown, South Kitsap. Jordan Anderson with the 18-yard touchdown run on the counter on fourth down. And just like that, the Wolves are in the end zone. Jordan Anderson uh, calling his name a number a lot tonight. Finally gets into the end zone. So his name can be added to the list of guys who scored touchdowns tonight here for South Kitsap as a score, 54-8. Here with 5:20 left in the third quarter, another quick six for South Kitsap, relatively quick, and Mount Tahoma not really able to recover from that first quarter barrage where they uh, went down 28 to nothing. 
54 to eight right now. South Kitsap lines up for the extra point. Aaron Ladeau, the sophomore, uh, with kicking duties. As you see, a nice shot of uh, Coach Sigurdsson there with a nice, uh, nice big smile on his face. Oh, we have a, uh, we have a blown, oh boy. <laughs> we have a blown uh, play on the uh, point after as uh, the, uh, <laughs> just a lot of chaos on the field as the ball squirts out, goes back to about the 30 yard line and uh, Mount Tahoma a player tackled by a, a South Kitsap uh, special teams uh, gentleman and the South Kitsap <laughs> unable to convert on that point after attempt. I've never really quite seen a play like that where the, the ball gets, uh, gets uh, squirted out there back at the 30 yard line. And uh, referees are blowing their whistles and guys are still tackling each other. And South Kitsap unsuccessful, the score remains 54 to eight. DB, uh, what do you expect to see from uh, Mount Tahoma here? Uh, last week we saw Lincoln down by 29 points in the fourth quarter. They stuck to their game plan and uh, they held their heads up. Mount Tahoma, you think it's the uh, same thing or is, uh, are they uh, gonna be dragging some tail here? Well, the one thing that Mount Tahoma needs to do is not give up and not quit. It's a difficult situation when you're in this. You know, it's, it's uh, your, basically your last game of the season and uh, Mount Tahoma is trailing South Kitsap 54 to eight with 520 remaining left in the third quarter of play. But uh, I don't really expect to see that th kind of thing happening like we saw last week with Lincoln, uh, South Kitsap up big. But uh, maintain your composure, just try and execute and enjoy uh, one of your last games of your career, a lot especially of these guys, for the seniors. A lot of these guys from Mount Tahoma are seniors, and so they you know, play your hearts out. Even though the score's not on your side, just play, play it tough. A little squib kick here down to the far right side, and the ball's just going to go out of bounds. And uh, there will be a penalty play uh, as uh, South Kitsap kicks the ball out of bounds. Mount Tahoma is going to have the ball in good field position, but uh, South Kitsap uh, was able, they got another turnover, the interception by DeAndre Van Slyke. Got all the way down to about the Mount Tahoma three, but there was a penalty flag on the play, uh, an illegal block in the back, but the Wolves still had the ball at the Mount Tahoma 20 yard line. And after a couple of series of play, it was a big fourth down, and the Wolves ran a counter play, and Jordan Anderson was able to go in from 18 yards out. Uh, South Kitsap just throwing it to everything but the kitchen sink at the Mount Tahoma Thunderbirds here tonight offensively and doing a great job of just executing, 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 doing a, a great job of uh, putting points up on the board. 54 to eight, South Kitsap. Mount Tahoma with the first down, they hand the ball off to the running back, tries to break out to the outside. Nice run there on offense by, that's Junior Ungozia. And uh, they were able to get almost to the first down marker. Nice run there, but that was some good blocking up front by the offensive line of Mount Tahoma. Absolutely, Mount Tahoma doing a good job there. We're just talking about how they still need to execute their game plan, still play the game. Doing a great job there of blocking, creating a hole. Ungozia getting up the right side there, uh, bringing up about, uh, oh, I don't know, second, second and four for Mount Tahoma as they line up three backs, uh, no wide outs, and they're looking to uh, open up the uh, running game possibly here. Baines under center, they're gonna hand the ball off to the tailback, that's number nine for the Mount Tahoma Thunderbirds, he's not gonna get very far. Uh, in fact, he's gonna get back maybe to the original line of scrimmage, Zach Powell with, the, the, time, with the, the carry, and uh, but he gets back just to the line of scrimmage, it's gonna be third and short for Mount Tahoma, I'm gonna call it third and two. That looked like Philip Holt there on the uh, tackle. For South third, Kitsap. Third, Powell with the tackle. carry, and uh, Mount Tahoma would like nothing better uh, to get uh, the first down here. So they're sticking with the running game. Mount Tahoma coming out. They're going to keep it pretty tight up there near that offensive line. And uh, they're going to hand the ball off to the running back one more time. That's Junior one more time. He gets off the right tackle. Nice rub, by, nice run by Junior. He gets, uh, he gets the out to the, the, to the far the right side, and he's going to have the first down line. at about the 47-yard line for Mount Tahoma. The clock continues to run here with 3.35 left in the third quarter. Nice first down pick up there from Mount Tahoma. As South Kitsap uh, giving up a couple of a uh, couple of yards here. And uh, we really have some we have some sophomores and some backups here for South Kitsap playing here in the third quarter with the score being the way it is. So we're gonna see some guys uh, getting used to being in the game right now. Baines hands the ball up to Junior one more time and he sidesteps his way around, keeps on his feet. Well done by Junior to get up to near the first down marker as uh, the Thunderbirds uh, doing a nice job here, Gerard, on this offensive series. Absolutely, they're running their plays, doing their thing. We were just talking about it. 
what what's Mount Tahoma going to do? Are they going to are they going to play or are they going to fold it up? And so right now they're playing and have not especially the seniors. We we're just talking about it. The speed the seniors. It's their last game for Mount Tahoma. There's no playoffs for them after you know after tonight, and they've got to play hard, and that's what they're doing right now. This time Mount Tahoma comes out with two wide receiver split. They're going to hand the ball up to Junior one more time. He's going to got a good block up front. Well done as Junior, Junior just puts again, his the, head down and yeah, he just barrels forward. And he will have the first the down first just down. across the 40-yard line, or just short of the 40-yard line. We're going to call Anthony it at Lombardi the South Kitsap 41. So Mount Tahoma into South Kitsap territory. And South Kitsap seeing what they can do here to stop this uh, current Mount Tahoma drive. Mount Tahoma coming out here trying to do some damage on, with, for themselves on offense. Mount Tahoma sticking with that running game. Now they only have a couple of running backs, and then they're going to hand the ball off to Junior one more time. Got a nice block up front. He's able to fall down forward. Good, Good tackle from behind Good by the Wolves. But uh, Junior has just been doing a great job of running the ball here tonight. The yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this drive especially, he's really picking up a lot of yards and just doing a great job of keeping that Mount Tahoma offense moving forward, pushing uh, the South Kitsap Wolves defense back on their heels a little bit. We'll see what Mount Tahoma can do here if they obviously are sniffing the end zone a little bit. Haven't really seen too much pay dirt, pay dirt tonight. We'll see what they can do here. And even with a lot of substitutions coming in and out of the game for the Wolves, Mount Tahoma doing a nice job not giving up, quitting, executing here on offense. They are coming to a set. Baines under center. They're going to hand the ball up to Junior one more time. Oh, and he's hit hard from behind. What a great hit by number 67 for the Wolves. That's Anthony Lombardi. Lombardi came flying in, and I'll tell you what, it looked like he knocked a few teeth out on that one. Wow. That's a, that's a nice tackle there from Anthony Lombardi as he just... Uh, Smacks them out to home a runner there as the clock continues to run. One minute left in the quarter. Nice tackle from Anthony Lombardi there to uh, stop forward progress in a big way. It's going to be third and two for the T-Birds. We might have to uh, contact a dentist here in town uh, for that young man after some teeth came flying out. In fact, I know a good dentist, a good friend of mine, uh, Dr. Chris Bach. Smack. Dr. Chris Bach Smackage, who was a great player here at South Kitsap High School himself as Mount Tahoma's gonna run the ball. Uh-oh, D-Rod, there are more teeth flying right there. Absolutely, and call Dr. Bach because we, uh, it's, it's number 67. Uh, That's Lombardi again. For the Wolves, Anthony Lombardi, this 5'7", 182 pound sophomore, doing a great job uh, in the last couple of plays. Uh, shout outs, Dr. Chris Bach, one of our uh, favorite local hometown dentists. One of our uh, class valedictorians from the class of 1992. And a stud football player stud as well. Stud football, gold helmet winner. Gold helmet for South, winner. For South Kitsap yeah, back in 91. Mr. Do-It-All. South Kitsap uh, on defense here. As Mount Tahoma, as we're going to have a, uh, well, here we have the end of the third quarter of play. South Kitsap leading Mount Tahoma 54-8. to eight, And we are going to throw it down to the field for the South Kitsap High School Marching Band. Throw it down. Mr. Grams, the uh, director of our South Kitsap uh, marching band. And uh, obviously the big story is the Rose Bowl. Um, what does that mean for you and your band to be invited to such a prestigious event? Well, as a, as a musician, I marched in as a director to be able to go back and take a group of kids. And I tell you, all the hard work and everything we put into it uh, in, in order to get there has been unbelievable. 
and uh, to be rewarded by being invited to the Tournament of Roses, it, it means everything to us. And uh, obviously it requires a lot of funding to go on this trip, and you've been receiving funds in a variety of ways, including the concession stand here at these South games. Uh, what has the parent and community support been like for this trip? Uh, the parent and community support has been great. Uh, we sold close to $27,000 27, $27, worth of uh, raffle tickets for our crews. Uh, and we've get, been getting donations every day. I get uh, two, couple hundred dollars in donations from people in the community. So they've really uh, rallied around us and uh, to help us get there. And uh, how close are you to your goal? Um, I'll know tomorrow. All the final payments are due and uh, then we'll see uh, where we're at. So, but we'll, we'll be really close. So. All right, and one question I personally have been wondering a lot. Obviously you do a theme of what songs you choose to do each year. Uh, are you a big Bon Jovi fan? Do you like uh, Slippery When Wet? <laughs> I like Bon Jovi. I like their songs. Uh, when we were searching for music, we were uh, looking through everything and just kind of decided that... You're uh, awesome, Coach. You're awesome. Thanks. We, uh, we're looking through the music. It's like, you know, this would be fun to play, and the crowd would enjoy it, and we like it, so that's what we picked. All right. Uh, Thank you very much. That, again, was uh, Mr. Grams, our uh, band director. Uh, this has been Cameron Brown uh, being your sideline reporter all game. This is my last uh, senior football game also, so I'm a little emotional, too, on this very nice night. Throwing it back to you one more time to Debau and D Rod in the booth. Cameron Brown, uh, nice, tra uh, nice interview there with Mr. Grams. And, uh, you know, I don't mean this in a bad way, Mr. Grams, but you give love a bad name. As now, Mount Tahoma, and thank you, Cameron Brown, for the sideline reports. Really, really quality work. As Mount Tahoma punches it in for touchdown number two of the night, and they're going for two points. And the pass is slotted down by number eight for South Kitsap. That is Ray Chico, and it's an unsuccessful attempt. By Ray it's 54 to 14, 10 and a half left here in the fourth quarter. We've had a nice interview with Mr. Ed Santos, the athletic director here tonight. We've had a, an interview with uh, the uh, band director, Mr. Gary Grams here tonight. And, uh, just overall awesome work reporting for Cameron Brown. Great job, video crew. Well, like we were saying, the uh, South Kitsap High School marching band under the direction of Gary Graham has been doing a great job all year long. And uh, always a pleasure to come out here and watch, uh, listen to the band playing in their halftime festivities. And uh, like you were saying earlier, uh, the band is trying to, uh, continuing to try and finish up their fundraising, uh, raise enough money so they can make that big trip down to California here coming up soon in a few months. Uh, and um, But uh, overall, they're doing a great job of their performances. And just like the senior football players, the senior band members also enjoying their last home football game here this night. Casey Dowdy. Yes, absolutely. Pete, along with Chris Hutcherson. CJ Dowdy in for the game in the game for uh, South Kitsap. I just heard on the intercom a former basketball player of mine. It's uh, John Cedric. He is a sophomore this year. Uh, he is number not sure yet because I'm still looking for him. It's good to see he's in the game. Also in uh, back deep to receive the kickoff for the Wolves is number 12 Chris Hutcherson. So uh, Dowdy and Hutcherson are back to receive this kick. Uh, Mount Tahoma did get on the board. They had a big pass play as uh, they got the ball all the way down to the one yard line and uh, then Baines was able to just sneak it right in over center and they went for the two point conversion but they were unsuccessful however they do trail the Wolves 54 to 14 with 10 and 29 remaining here in the game and it looks like Mount Tahoma might even go for an onside kick and they are they're going to try and kick it oh and they were close but nothing doing and the Wolves are going to fall on the ball. They're going to mark it down at the South Kitsap 47-yard line. So South Kitsap will take over and down to D-Rod. I can only imagine we're going to start seeing a few more substitutions here with such a big lead in South Kitsap. I guess that you're uh, you're very correct about that, Mr. Mr. D. Bow Bowden. Uh, with 10-15 left here in the fourth quarter, we can safely say the Wolves are on their way to victory. Unless Mount Tahoma can surmount a 40-point comeback attack here in the fourth quarter without allowing South Kitsap to score a single extra point. We're going to guess and assume that South Kitsap will cruise into an undefeated season, which is a, a rarity, as you heard uh, Ed Santos talking about on the sideline with, with Cameron Brown. Uh, before 2002, I can't remember the last time the Wolves went undefeated. I know they had some undefeated seasons back in the 80s and 90s under the tutelage of Ed Fisher as Tanner Romo th steps back to pass to number 24, and that's a completed pass. Two, that is a Ricky Johnson for South Kitsap. 
Uh, an undefeated season is going to be huge for South Kitsap. They're ranked seventh in the state, although the top ten rankings don't really mean much if you talk to any coach in the state or anywhere. It uh, doesn't mean anything because one loss in the playoffs means you're out. So what does a top ten ranking really mean? Although it is a point of pride for South Kitsap to be ranked top ten in the state again. It is. And, it is. Uh, really, really uh, something that these players can hang their hats on. Mike Alonzo and Ricky Johnson are in. At uh, wide receiver here, we've got uh, a host of new uh, Wolves that are in here. Chris Hutcherson is in at tailback. Romo with the fake. He's going to roll to his left. He's got a mount out in the flat, and the pass is incomplete. The pass was intended for the tight end, number 83 for the Wolves. That is Ben Severins, and uh, the pass was incomplete by Romo to Severins, and uh, the Wolves that are going to have a second down Severance. here uh, to go. But, uh, d -Rod, like you were saying earlier about the playoffs, it is so correct. Uh, about like how uh, just a momentum breaker uh, w winning and or losing going into the playoffs and the Wolves are well under their way uh, going into the playoffs next week with an undefeated 9-0 and season as Romo comes in. It's actually going to be third down, about four yards to go. Romo is going to hand the ball off to Hutcherson and uh, Hutch, he's able to spin his way forward, tries to keep going and I don't know if forward progress will get him that first down or not, but they get just on the inside. We're going to call it down to the 44-yard line. South Kitsap needs to break that. It's going to be fourth and one to go. In fact, it's going to be fourth and inches, and I'll bet that the Wolves go for it here. I'm guessing that they will. And uh, speak, speaking of regular season, oh, they're going to punt. Speaking of regular season and records and things like that, I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, that the Wolves will be uh, the Narrows League champions because I know in basketball there's a playoff to determine Narrows League champs, but I don't think there's going to be a playoff for that. We just go right into uh, regional and state playoffs. So I, I believe the, the Wolves will be undefeated and they'll be Narrows League champions for and 2009. The Wolves will be going into the first round of the playoffs as we have a penalty and flag that play. comes flying in here. Might be a delay of game. It could be a delay of game. It's on south. Um... The South Kit, and they are, they're going to scoot him back a few, uh, about five more yards. It's going to be a delay of game, I believe, warning against the Wolves. So yeah. scoot the Wolves back five more yards near midfield. Oh, it was an illegal substitution against the Wolves is what it was. According so, to our PA announcer, Mr. That's Jeff right. Mitchell. As, uh, so South Kitsap will kick the ball away. Aaron Ladeau is doing the kicking duties in a quick rush right there. The Thunderbirds were trying to block that punt. The back man gets the ball at the 15-yard line, has a little bit of room to run. That's number four. That's Robert Donald for the Thunderbirds. But uh, Mount Tahoma will have the ball first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. But like you were saying earlier, D-Rod, momentum is everything. And uh, But the Wolves are going to have some momentum going into the first round of the playoffs next week. Absolutely. And uh, we'll be the number two team out of the Southwest District, and we're not sure who that's going to be yet. Uh, according to Mr. Ed Santos there on the sideline report, we'll wait and have to see uh, what happens tomorrow night. There might have to be a playoff because there could be a, t a tie for second, so they might have to have a mini playoff on Monday, um, which involves, uh, you know, two, uh, two uh, running clock halves of 10 minutes and a half a field. No, I'm kidding. That's not a mini playoff. It's just a single playoff game to determine who, <laughs> to determine who, who will take second place for the Southwest Division. So Baines under center, they're going to hand the ball off to the running back, and he cuts back opposite to the far side of the field. That was Powell on the run. No, that was Powell doing the blocking. Uh, Junior had the ball one more time for Mount Tahoma, and uh, got uh, that was a big two-yard gain, I'll tell you right there, because it sure looked like he gained about 22. Well, it's a good, good block and a good run, and Mount Tahoma still working hard here. And uh, most... A lot of their starters still in the game. Those guys are going to play it, play it out, and uh, it's good to see them still, still hustling and, and playing hard. Baines is going to hand the ball up to Junior one more time, but not until a pack of Wolves is right there to stop him. And it uh, looked like that the ball came loose, but I think that the officials were already signaling that his forward progress had st uh, been stopped. So uh, we're going to say that he gained about... Uh, maybe a couple on the play. We'll see how far that they scoot it forward. Right the officials the are conversing. Pie and ice cream once again down there. Talking about pie and ice cream. What, do they, ice do, cream. what are they doing after the game? Is it going to be blueberry or rhubarb? Or is it going to be a la mode or whipped cream? That's right. Now they're calling in the other officials oh, to see what well, kind of pie and ice cream they're going to get the oh, Mount Tahoma. Uh, heated or not heated. Heated or not heated. That's right. So uh, but, that's uh, uh, By the way, that's number 25, Douglas Yamamoto, and number 34, Caleb Nelson, and on the tackle there for South Kitsap on that last play. Pie, which peach pie? 
apple pie. You know, peach, peach pie, pie sounds pretty good right now. Ooh, that does sound good. So South Kitsap uh, on defense here. A lot of substitutions coming in. Number 63 for the Wolves. And uh, number 75, that is uh, Christian Kell. And uh, now there's some more substitutions coming off the field here, trying to get some guys in the in the play. Baines, he drops back. He's looking flushed out of the puck. He's got a man out of the flat. That's Powell with the reception at the 20. And uh, he sidesteps a would-be tackler, keeps going on his feet. He shakes up another tackler until he's finally taken down. And that is Lombardi. Lombardi, the sophomore, has just been everywhere tonight on defense. All over the place. Lombardi doing a great job making tackles for these Wolves. Uh, you know, the, uh, the back there for uh, from Mount Tahoma is running all over the place. Somebody needed to come in there and take him down. Uh, we're going to go back down to Cameron Brown. What do you got for us, Cameron? Hi, um, I'm here with uh, Mr. Ledeau, who, of course, is the father of Leon Ledeau and Aaron Ledeau, two of our fine upstanding football players here at South. He's also a security officer here at the school. Uh, Mr. Ledeau, from a parent's perspective, as a representative of all the parents here, what does it feel like to be a senior here, or be here on senior night with your child being one of the seniors? I think it's a special occasion, not just for me, but for everybody else that's involved with the uh, seniors tonight, as, you know, as well as all the cheerleaders. Um, you knew this time was coming. I remember Pickard and I, principal of South Colby, we'd be in the stands when these kids were seventh graders and always saying, you know, one day our boys are going to be out there, but we were always saying at the same time, that I can wait for that day because you know it's going to come and go real quick and that's exactly what's happened. It's like come here in a flash. So I think a lot of the senior parents here are just, you know, happy in one way but sad in another. And uh, obviously we've had a wildly successful season. Um, looks like we're going to have a completely undefeated regular season. What are your thoughts uh, as a parent who's been watching all these games? What are your thoughts on the season thus far? Well, as far as the season's concerned, I, I think, like I just said, they're going to go 9-0, and win the Narrows League. Uh, I think since first time since 2002, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think it's wonderful that these kids, they've worked really hard. Uh, most of them have played together since seventh grade. A lot of them have played together since Pee Wees. So just the work effort of these kids, you know, not just on the field, but a lot of them have done it in the classroom as well. So they should be proud of themselves. The coaches should be proud of themselves. And, everybody else who's helped them work this hard to get there. And uh, of course, you're the parent of uh, two of the boys on the football team. Um, Leon in particular has been a huge playmaker this season. You must be uh, obviously very proud of them. Uh, what would you uh, want to say to them? Oh, you know, just both my boys, I love them very much. Their mother loves them very much. You know, both of them get all their talent from their mother, so it's nothing to do with me. They've done a great job. Leon's done a great job with his younger brother. He's encouraged them all the way through. Um, as far as them playing together, you know, it's sort of a dream come true. You never think that your two boys are going to be on the same field together. So I'm glad that they got to play together. That's really all I can say about that. And, you know, just like I say, all these boys have done a great job. And, you know, encouraging the younger sophomores as well. That's been great. All right. Uh, that, again, was Mr. Ledeau. Uh, throwing it back to uh, Mr. Bowden in the booth. Cameron, thanks for that uh, little report there on the sideline. We have a lot of activity going on down here. Mount Tahoma actually got into the end zone for a touchdown, but a penalty flag negated that score, and they scooted them back all the way to the 28-yard line. So Mount Tahoma, there is only uh, 220 remaining here in the game, but uh, Mount Tahoma still trailing 54-14 is uh, looking to try and get on to the board once again here. They're coming out with that power running game in the backfield the clock has started and uh, Baines is going to look to his right now he drops back looks to his left flushed out of the pocket and he's being chased down from behind he tries to extend the ball forward yeah, as fast as keeper. much as he can but Baines is taken down and uh, now they're going he's to stop the clock here with 204 yeah. remaining and Mountain Home is going to call a timeout that's the uh, number 27 Jens Johnson in there on the on the tackle for South Kitsap I believe um, Baines scrambling around in the, in the pocket there. Uh, that hold brings him back quite a few yards. It's going to be, let's see what I can see here. It's going to be about uh, second down for the T-Birds as they stop the clock. They want to try to punch the ball in here and make the score a little bit more respectable. As they did get into the end zone, but a hold call brought the ball back. And they will go for it, of course, on second down and about 18. So tonight the T-Birds not... Not so successful with uh, with our offense against the uh, the stingy Wolves defense. One uh, actually had one rushing touchdown and one passing touchdown, I believe tonight. I'm losing track a little bit. There's been a lot of scoring here tonight. 
Exactly, and uh, early on the Wolves were able to jump all over the T-Birds early on uh, in the first quarter. They got a big, big 68-yard touchdown pass play. Uh, Gordy Anderson hit Isaiah Davis, uh, the first of four touchdowns tonight for Gordy Anderson, and uh, the T-Birds just weren't really able to recover from there as we come out from the timeout. Baines is in the shotgun there, now in the spread offense. They've got four wide receivers. Baines looks for a man down the field. He's going to just chuck it up there. And the ball is on. It looked, and it was tipped around. And uh, Bazil was in the end zone. And it looked like he could have reached back and grabbed it. But it must have been a little bit too far out of bounds. And the pass was incomplete. Too many, uh, too many uh, South Kitsap defenders there. Too many hands in the, in the, in the pot. And uh, Bazil unable to bring that ball in for a big game. As... Baines cocked back and threw that, hooked that ball up. They do four, or they go with four wide outs, spread offense again. Well, the uh, rule in high school football is that if you're down by a certain number of points, that the clock keep the clock keeps running as they're going to go for the home run ball, and the pass is caught for a touchdown. Bazil caught the ball from Baines. Nice job there. It was a 28-yard touchdown pass. Baines hit Bazil in the end zone, and Mount Tahoma is on the board once again. It's a nice pass and a nice catch from Bazil. Way to keep his feet in bounds as he's falling backwards. That's been uh, Baines' favorite target tonight. Has been Bazil. Uh, fill in the uh, viewers at home about the uh, the running clock rule with the score being a certain amount. Uh, they the rule in the high school football is is that if you are down by a certain number of points, that the clock keeps running, and so the uh, even on the, even on incomplete passes, even out of on incomplete play. passes, yes. And the T-Birds were down by 40 points. To be honest with you, I thought it was being down by 45. As the T-Birds go for the two-point conversion, I don't think it's going to count. There's a penalty flag down here, right below us. But uh, yes, in the new rule yeah, that I the clock will keep running, a running clock. But um, I thought it was at 45 points, but they, the T-Birds were down by 40 points, so I guess it must be a 40-point rule. It must be a 40-point rule. The clock was running. I noticed that, and I wasn't quite sure what that was about. Um, the uh, officials must have signaled up here to the booth to our right uh, to the clock keeper to keep the clock running, and I noticed that it was running after a, an out-of-bounds play and an incomplete pass, so I thought, oh, someone's making a mistake or just nobody cares, but apparently that's a rule. Well, the, uh, the South Kitsap Wolves are, are on their way to win their ninth straight game of the season. They will finish the regular season undefeated as the clock is now. The, the, the officials did signal for the clock to start here where they're going to go for the extra point. But uh, the Wolves are going to finish undefeated as they head into next week's contest for the first round of the state playoffs. As uh, Mr. Ed Santos, the athletic director at South Kitsap High School, stated earlier, uh, we do not net do not yet know whom we are playing or where we are playing, but all of that information will be available by next week. So all you folks at home and all the folks here at the stadium, as the pass is incomplete, they went for that the two-point conversion for, uh, for Mount Tahoma. But uh, so everybody can find out exactly Michael when Oscar and where the Wolves will be playing. But uh, it will be a home game for the Wolves. Uh, we just don't know. If, and uh, my sources have been telling me that the game will be played either over at Peninsula High School or over at Silverdale Stadium, and we have to also wait for all of the playoff scenarios to take place down in the Vancouver area, in the Southwest area, for uh, the Southwest number two. And I'll tell you, D-Rod, uh, it's either tonight or tomorrow night. I believe that the game is being played tonight. The top two teams in the state, the number one ranked Skyline Spartans, are playing the Bothell Cougars tonight up at Number one versus number two. Number one versus number two up at Pop Keeney Stadium. And I believe that the game is actually on the radio on uh, AM 950 KJR uh, out of Seattle. So uh, that would be an interesting score to that, hear. That is very exciting. Very exciting. I would like to know what the score of that game is. Uh, callers more than welcome to call into us and let us know the score of that game. Well, that would be great if we actually had phones. But uh, unfortunately... The phone lines are down for us here right now. We're not, on the we're not on the radio? We are not on the radio. We are on television, and even here oh. on, in TV land, we don't even have telephones that oh. anybody can call in. So As uh, Mount Tahoma lines up for another onside kick. They are going for it, and there is going and to be a penalty flag, which usually means there's going to be an offsides as Mount Tahoma was going for the onside kick, but uh, somebody from Mount Tahoma Rich. went past that line of scrimmage just a little bit too soon. That they did. So and uh, and it, with the South kids out being up 34 points now, I, I'm guessing the rule is at 40. The clock keeps running. I'm guessing that the clock, maybe the clock won't stop on dead ball situations now. It'll be back to normal. 
We'll have to wait and see. They're only down by 34 points, so uh, we'll see if the clock does keep running. But uh, what will also be interesting next year, D-Rod, is uh, the South Kitsap Wolves will win the Narrows League Championship this year in football as they finish the season undefeated. But next year, uh, the Narrows League will be changing as we are going to be welcoming in four new schools. Uh, the Narrows League has 11 schools. Uh, our sources have told us that, uh, that talks are in the making at uh, most likely we're going to be having four new schools come in uh, that and we'll have somewhat of a 3A, 4A league. Uh, Yelm, North Thurston, Timberline, and Capital will also be back in the Narrows League next year, making a, a total number of 15 teams in the Narrows League. And uh, Timberline and North Thurston, former members of the Narrows League. Uh, and Capital. And Capital as well, as Mount Tahoma is going to go for the little squib kick, but South Kitsap is just going to let the ball uh, just fall on the ball itself Caleb but the clock and we're right and it does keep going so um, apparently they are going to keep the clock running here tonight so I'm not really sure exactly what the new rule is in terms of exactly how many points maybe but it's maybe it's 33 points it could uh, if be you're more than 33 points your clock is running it must be as uh, South Kitsap is uh, going to just let the clock run out here now under a minute remaining and I can only imagine that Coach Sigurdsson is down there on the sideline talking to his players saying, whatever you do, don't turn the ball over, and we are probably going to just run this ball, and we're not getting cute. Uh, nothing cute. Uh, just keep it uh, keep it predictable. Going to take a victory formation snap here, and the game will end, and the South Kitsap Wolves will march on. Skyline loses to Bothell tonight, as we heard just over the, uh, the airwaves. Uh, surprise! Uh, just uh, probably an amazing game, something one we'd like to see. We might be playing one of those schools a couple weeks down the road. I'm sure it was amazing. As South Kitsap marches on to an undefeated season, nine and zero, undefeated league champs of the Narrows League. Good job, South Kitsap, uh, defeating Mount Tahoma tonight, 54 to 20. And not only did we have a big roar of the crowd because the Wolves are going to finish the regular season undefeated. But no sooner did we say that, that a uh, couple of uh, South Kitsap football players snuck up behind Coach DJ Sigurdsson, and they did the traditional dumping of the Gatorade barrel all over him. Ah, oh, that's sweet. That means that they love him. Let's just hope that he doesn't come down with a cold or flu. But uh, anyways, uh, nice job by the South Kitsap Wolves as they come away with a 54-20 to victory here tonight at the final home season a uh, regular season football game being played here at Joe Knowles Field. We want to thank everybody for joining us here tonight, South Kitsap High School football game. We'd also like to thank the students of the video production program here at South Kitsap High School who have made this television program possible. Again, and we, we, can't, uh, we can't end the night without having a big shout out or also a big thank you to D-Rod for joining Woo! us in the booth here this year one more time. Uh, DB uh, and Mr. Downham, thanks so much for having me over here in the booth. Uh, it's been a pleasure and a privilege of mine uh, to, uh, to be in the booth once again. The video production crew, excellent job. And thanks to everyone for having us and me up here in the booth for the 09 SK football season. And once again, the Wolves finished the season undefeated 9-0, ranked number seven in the state, and they will head into next week's first round playoff game. Uh, still awaiting to hear the time and the place in which they will be playing most likely the number two out of the Southwest seed. South Kitsap goes into the first round of the playoffs as the Narrows League number one team. Well, we, again, we'd like to thank everybody here for joining us here in the booth tonight. Check your local listings and your local school district here at South Kitsap High School for the time and the dates for all of the playoff action. I'm Darren Bowden. I'd like to thank D-Rod for joining me here in the booth tonight. Mike Downham and his video production crew, Mr. Gary Grahams and the South Kitsap High School Band, and to all of the students and staff and parents and community of South Kitsap that has made this an excellent football season. So, once again, South Kitsap, South Kitsap defeats Mount Tahoma here 54 to 20. So long and good evening, everybody from South Kitsap High School.